Hello everyone, and welcome to the fanfic heaven, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the power of Dark Sith and Jedi Lord. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. His dreams flowed with the memories of his dark past and the event that had led him down the road of the dark side of the Force and meeting the three Force spirits that had forever changed his destiny from that day and on. He remembered the day of his ultimate betrayal and banishment at the hands of someone he once viewed as a surrogate mother who had in the end had only sought power to maintain her new position. He had seen many of his so-called friends turn on him and embrace their hatred and anger and vented upon him as if he was the demon that he carried since the day he had been born, an event that he had absolutely no choice in whatsoever. He still remembered the day he'd gone to see Tsunade about his future and that of the teammate he had rescued from the village's greatest threat who had done everything in his power to obtain the boy no matter the cost in the end. The older woman was clearly nursing a hangover and had been drinking heavily the night before and was in no mood to entertain anyone or anything at the moment. And yet for some reason she seemed different which the alcohol had no bearing on. He walked up to the desk careful to not antagonize her as her punches and strength were no laughing matter and came upon a document of his name parted on it only to discover what it was intended for. His curiosity had turned to horror as he read the clauses and punishments for simply completing a mission and realized that there was much more going on behind the scenes that he could not see but still the pain and anguish from what she had done to him had hurt him more than any assassination technique could ever do. His thoughts raced, is she doing all of this to me because of Sasuke? It's not fair that I should suffer because of the fort's actions to save these ungrateful people. Why should I suffer because of them and the fact that they cannot let go of their hatred? I have deceived myself for far too long in thinking that there is a chance for me here. I was a fool there is no hope in these people's hearts anymore. I have bled for them for far too long with nothing in return and there is no more point in staying here. It was at this moment that Tsunade was coherent enough to sense that someone was in the room with her only to see the young man she saw as a younger brother standing before her desk holding a piece of parchment that would decide his fate. But because of the effects of the alcohol and of her hangover had worn off and she was still not thinking clearly and instead of trying to comfort him she responded with anger and hatred and snatched the document from his hands not even bothering to read the document that was in her hands and in a fit of rage placed her official seal upon the document not caring that she had just destroyed whatever little hope the young man before her would have for many years to come and was the event that started his path down the dark side after stamping the document she called in several of her personal bodyguards the Anbu who were shocked at what they saw on the document as well but followed their orders as they began to drag the young man out of the office who could only yell out the question of why and was everything on that document true. To his utter dismay her response was a simple, yes, now get the hell out of my office you little brat. By the banishment order his ability to use ninjutsu from this day forward had been forever removed from his abilities unless this dark and evil place as he saw it now wished him to have his ability returned to him. He knew that if he stayed his life would be in tremendous amounts of danger forcing him to flee as soon as the deed had been done and the parchment was placed in his hands. He had read the document and knew that for some reason she wished him to suffer even more in the future by forcing him to return to this hellish place despite the fact that every person here would know his darkest secret that he had no control over and would do everything in their power to make his life and even more unbearable than it had already been. What was worse in his book was that he could not even enter the land of fire for the next three years without the threat of death upon him. He also knew that he could not stay in one place for too long as there were more than one group of people that would want nothing more than either have his death or to control him as their own personal weapon. It had taken him more than a month but he'd eventually reached what some called the lost era. He has heard many stories that many people would never willingly enter this place and thought, what a perfect place to hide. One of the stories have said that a great and terrible battle had taken place in the sky with flying ships who were from beyond the stars was even said that a dark order I found a new home here. It was upon entering this place that he discovered that it was a, in fact a large graveyard and battle site with strange metal buildings seemed as if they had once moved among the skies themselves upon entering several of strange silent metal structures he discovered had many strange things and it was here that he encountered them. Both the light and dark side of the force flowed strong waiting for the day of their return and it just so happens that this boy who had been denied so much in his life would suddenly be handed what some can only call one of the greatest powers in the known galaxy. The spirits themselves have debated and ultimately decided upon how to not only approach the boy but also how to train him as they had seen many events that would lead the boy down both the dark and the light path ultimately leaving him in balance. 
The darkest among them decided it was his turn to train the boy down this path of the dark side as it was a strange way that to do the right thing but due to the events he would soon become a part of what would allow him to grow like no other person in this land would ever receive and return the force to this wood once more. Naruto had finished what he could only describe as his initial search of this ship's bridge only to find two rather strange looking corpses that had been at the time of their death or the crash of this vessel had been engaged in mortal combat against one another. He had found no other bodies in this section and decided to at least give them some form of dignity and had taken the bodies outside to give them a proper burial and had kept their strange looking cylinder weapons for himself as he had seen that they still worked and realized they could come in quite handy against his many enemies. It was at this moment that he felt a strong presence in turn to see what he could only describe as a ghost of a rather evil looking old man standing before him with a curious look upon his face while at the same time the men seemed to have an aura of fear and hatred and even evil about him that was tempered with a calm collected nature, it was clear to him while this man had once done great evil he had also played a part in some kind of great event that had set a new balance of power. Naruto however felt no fear of this spirit and in fact felt something else. The desire to learn everything could and let his anger and hatred finally found a voice before it destroyed him in the process of trying to control it endlessly. The spirit before him nodded and then introduced itself, Hello young one, allow me to introduce myself I am Darth Sidious of the Sith and what would your name be young one? Naruto Uzumaki, are you going to hurt me? The boy asked him. The spirit could only laugh at this question, No my boy I have no intention of hurting you, in fact I have a proposal for you. What kind of proposal? Both I and two more spirits wish to train you in our arts, I have elected to begin your training first. The SP no deception in his voice at all for the young boy to hear unlike others he had met in the past. The spirit could see the worry and concern in the boy's face and eyes, I can assure you that to be trained by us is your choice and yours alone young one, so I ask you this, become our apprentice learn to use the force starting with the dark side. Naruto felt a great power come over him and went down on his knees before the spirit and said, I pledge myself to your teachings and that of my future teachers. Good, good young one the force is strong with you, a powerful Sith you will become. Henceforth you shall be known as Darth, Vader. I give you this name in honor of one of your teachers to come my young apprentice. Naruto bowed to his new master and said, Thank you my master. The spirit smiled and motioned for him to follow as he said, Rise Lord Vader, I have much to teach you and so little time there are things happening in this land and I believe that you will play a very important role in events yet to come. For the first year of his banishment he devoted himself to the teachings of the Force and told his master many times that he felt the power of the light side as well and that at times they were in balance when he was. Sidious at this moment realized that the boy was ready for the next step in his training. Despite what many would believe the Force had tempered the Dark Lord of the Sith somewhat, Sidious would indeed miss the young boy but would also keep an eye on him from the heart of the force which was strong with the boy after all this time, but it was up to his next two teachers to continue his training and for what was needed to learn more control over his hatred and anger especially after what had been done to him for so many years. Upon meeting them they had agreed to continue his training not just in the force but also in the aspects of ninjas and the samurais as well. Over the next two years he would learn many things from the samurai of the land of iron and eventually traveled to the land of wind to learn from their wind monks since he felt more at peace in this land than in the land of fire. By the time his banishment ordered had expired which would force him to return to the hidden leaf he decided to travel to the land of water to study under their monks and did so with not only the blessing of the four spirits but also the wind monks who respected his decision to continue to exploration of knowledge. He had also decided to return to the lost era and the small village that was near it, with a little help from the land of snow he was able to begin changing things there and had begun to gain the respect the village what he was trying to do. These men and women had from this world all of their technological wonders knowing they could create or more bloodshed in the process it was also here that he met her one of his closest allies and someone who had traveled to this world to help her distant cousins reclaim their place as warriors and soldiers. It was also at this point thanks to both the spirits and the monks of both wind and water that Naruto and the nine-tailed fox had agreed to work together and even to share information the biggest surprise was what the fox had called a gift which turned out to be the memories of his mother who had been his previous host and even told the young man his true name. The memories had also reinforced his desire to never return to the hidden leaf because of their treacherous actions and also added to the already massive fears that he would be nothing more than either a slave or killed if he returned there his time in the land of water had not been as peaceful as he had first hoped. 
When the new warlord who had replaced the previous Mazukaj and the legitimate government of the Land of Water had decided that the Water Temple had insulted him in some way he'd ordered their destruction only to meet Naruto's darkness in its purest form as he avenged those who had been murdered and had even saved the future cage of the hidden mist village whose name was Mei as well as the true daimyo of this land. Naruto had truly had enough and decided to finally end this bloody war once and for all and marched under. The illusion of being a bounty hunter to assist the warlord in his desires for power only to walk directly into the private office that looked more like a throne room and use the force to shut and lock all the doors and then proceeded to slaughter each and every one of these present knowing both through the force in his own feelings that not one of them was innocent and that they had committed grave atrocities upon the people of the lead of water. It was also at this time he had become known to tyrants that the name Darth Vader became feared to everyone in the elemental nations who have done evil deeds. With the help of the villagers of the Lost Era and their cousins from the stars as well as the Mist Rebellion they finally stopped the bloody genocidal wars in the Land of Water. During the third and fourth year of his banishment Naruto had decided to begin to not only try to restore his homeland but also to save the others like himself who had no choice in what they have become as human sacrifices. To that end he had begun to hunt down his fellow hosts and had at several occasions managed to kill several members of the organization known as Akatsuki. Unfortunately the organization had been quite strong and several of the tailed beasts along with their hosts had been lost to the organization. Upon one of his trips through the land of wind he had come to the aid of the daimyo of this country and his daughter as well as the seven-tailed host whose name was Fu who had been on the run as members of her village had sold her out to the Akatsuki to leave them alone and to remove what they considered a stain upon their village. The two members who had come after her were the first to truly fall his wrath and fury and survived, but they only knew him as Lord Vader and not as the nine-tailed fox's host. He had fond memories of that day as it was the day he met her. Naruto walked through the desert of the Land of Wind with a clear destination in mind that was the capital city where the daimyo of this land resided. Recently he had received a request from the land's daimyo had requested his services to protect not only himself but the man's daughter on some of their travels not only in the Land of Wind but also in other territories as well. As he walked to the meeting spot which was a small oasis in the desert to meet his future employers he felt the presence of his masters and stopped seeing three spirits before him once more as Siddhis then said, Lord Vader, there is a disturbance in the force. I have felt it my masters, in fact I feel one now, ahead of me? He said. It was at this point that Anakin closed his eyes and sensed the very force around them and then turned to his third apprentice and said, You must hurry there are innocents in danger and someone just like you. Sidus then became very serious and said in what some have called his Sith voice, You must move quickly Lord Vader or this host will be in great danger I sense do what must be done Lord Vader do not hesitate show them no mercy. He nodded to his masters and placed his special mask he had commissioned to help them with opponents that used deadly poisons in combat that also slightly resembled the mask of the original Darth Vader and quickly went off to engage the enemies and save his charges. As he entered the desert oasis he came face to face with two members of the Akatsuki organization that he did not recognize at all. One of them was wearing a mask that seemed to conceal much of his face while the other one had slicked back gray hair with a strange pendant around his neck and a triple-bladed scythe in his right hand with an evil smile upon his face, it's a shame that I can't sacrifice you for the glory of my god you little bitch. Enough Hedan we need her alive as well as these two which will bring us quite a bit of money for the organization. The one known as Kakuzu said. However it was right at some unseen reason that Hedan went flying right into and then through at least six trees eventually hitting a rock face with enough force behind it to break many of his bones upon impact even damaging the rock face significantly from the impact. The Imperial March Darth Vader's theme starts playing in the background. The look of shock upon both members of the Akatsuki organization's faces was truly a surprise to everyone as well as the fact that they then begin to hear a strange kind of breathing sound as someone in a strange looking bottle cloak with a hood walked up to them with a clear air about him that said, I will destroy you. It was at that moment that he removed the battle cloak revealing strange looking armor underneath and a kind of black glass looking like mask where the sounds of breathing were coming from but it was this man's eyes that scared them to the core as they were both glowing but one was the deepest sea blue wall the other one had the most evil looking tenant of red with the dark yellow iris that screamed death and destruction to them. Hedan had managed to finally manage to get back over to his partner with a clear look of utter pain upon his face and hatred for this individual. 
It was at this moment that Kakuzu decided to introduce themselves and find out if this person would tell them his identity as well as find out if there was a significant bounty upon his head that they could collect on later. Allow me to introduce myself and that of my partner here. I am Kakuzu and this murderous priest over here is Hidan, and what might your name be? The man in question narrowed his eyes and then spoke with a metallic-like sounding voice, Think Darth Vader's, I am Darth Vader, and I am a Sith Lord. You will release my employer the daimyo and his daughter and relinquish your hunt for this young woman or I will show you no mercy. For the first time in their time together Hidan saw actual worry upon the face of his partner and asked him about it. Why do you look so scared all of a sudden we can kill this motherfucker easily? Oh really, you do know that this is the man who single-handedly ended the war in the land of water as well as slaughtered an entire army of rogue samurai that numbered in the thousands without breaking a sweat and let us not forget that he just threw you across this desert oasis with absolutely no problem and let us not forget that you are still putting your bones back in the right place. Hidan however seemed unimpressed as he put his collarbone back inside his body and then said, I am so going to kill this guy with a fucking smile upon my face as I do it and then sacrifice him to my god. When Hidan turned his head to stare this Sith Lord down he was shocked to see the man had pulled out two rather strange looking cylinders from his hips and with a single motion they blazed to life with a strange kind of humming sound. Naruto had sealed his lightsabers onto his body thanks to his mastery of seals and had also created auxiliary weapons to use not only with his force abilities but also with his abilities in the use of chakra which would allow him to use his three elements in combat which were wind water and fire that made weapons as deadly as a normal lightsaber and could even fight said weapon. Vader wasted no time in not only drawn his weapons but engaging the two Akatsuki members with a relentless set of attacks and had them on the defensive almost immediately which made Hidan even angrier when one of the Vader's sea sabers cut his scythe into tiny pieces and with another quick motion took off his right arm just above the elbow. The second saber then pierced him right through the chest with one quick motion caught up words slicing his left collarbone into leaving a massive hole in his chest which was then followed up by the strange man pushing his hands forward but never making physical contact with them until he dan the same kind of force hit him once again this time sending him right through a rock that was not more than a meter away. Kakuzu after seeing this had attempted to sneak up on Vader from behind only to nearly get his head cut off in the process it hadn't been for his many long years of being a ninja he would have been decapitated right then and there as he then heard the man say, impressive. Kakuzu then activated his abilities with his hearts to send two of the monsters to attack the Sith Lord only to watch them be utterly destroyed in less than a minute and began to feel a little bit afraid as he then heard the Sith say, most impressive. Kakuzu then saw Hidan pick up what was left of his own while trying to put most of his body back together and realized that they could not win this battle and that they had to inform their leader about this new threat as soon as possible and made a run for it. Vader kept his eyes on them until they were definitely in full retreat and then turned and walked over to his employers and bowed before them showing them respect and said, What is thy bidding my master? The wind daimyo and the two young women walked up to him and said, It is a pleasure to finally meet you Lord Vader. This is my daughter Akon and this young woman just met whose name is Fu. From this day forward Naruto would get to KN Kakuzu and the other members of the Akatsuki organization were busy trying to put Hidan back to together again as the holographic image of the Akatsuki leader Pain looks upon the scene before him with both a sense of shock and surprise. He could hear the crazy and foul-mouthed priest shouting his obscenities as they slowly put him back together and watched as several weapons makers from the Hidden Rain village began to forge him a new scythe. Pain turned and looked Kakuzu right in his eyes and then said, Are you sure this was the man known as Darth Vader? That was the name he told us and what I know about this warrior it all fits but he was far more powerful than I had anticipated, while I believe that Hidan really would have survived the battle we were clearly no match for him. I lost two my of hearts to this man who seemed to see everything coming at him and he was not using any chakra in any of his strange attacks. He only used it to power the weapon he was using against us which are of a seal design I have never seen before. Payne was now truly surprised to hear of the man's abilities but realized that the zombie brothers as the two men had become known amongst the organization clearly were not the best group suited to fight this individual with his unusual abilities as they were mostly suited for close range fighting. Payne then turned to Itachi and Kisame who could probably give this individual a run for his money as they did not know if he would become a significant threat to them in the future or to their plans. He may have caught you too off guard but at least we have learned some things about him, and I know who to send after him next if he gets in our way once more. Payne said as his image faded from the cave. 
Naruto sat on his bed meditating to gain control of his abilities even more so but also reviewing his fight with the two Akatsuki members and realized that he had the element of surprise during that battle and it could have been much harder had they been prepared for him. He also realized that they appeared to be used to taking large amounts of damage and were mostly a close range team but problem was they would just keep coming. He had also held back keeping many of his abilities from being seen knowing that knowledge was a dangerous weapon for anyone and that the next team from that organization would be a lot harder to take on as they would be picked to counteract him and to continue on to their target, which at this time was a woman whose name was Fu. He then pulled out a small silver communicator that he had been given and decided to call some old friends, as the holographic image appeared he saw a man in white armor with blue highlights and a woman in a form-fitting battle armor. The two of them appeared to be in some form of argument which made them sound like an old married couple, the two had not even Nautic decided to get their attention, did I call it at a bad time. The two of them immediately stopped their argument and turned face their young friend, he decided to see if he could get a rise out of them, so are there any wedding plans or should I just send you a baby gift or something. The two of them could not help but roll their eyes at the comment and even heard laughter in the background, now that they were thoroughly humiliated they decided to see what he wanted to know. Yes yes very funny what is it you want to know you little punk. You do know that I can use the force choke you from here right? He asked her. A large beaded of sweat rolled down the side of her head in remembering just what this young man could do thanks to his mastery of the force, and yet at the same time it was merely meant to get her attention as there were matters to attend to. Luckily it was her friend who spoke, everything is going well Lord Vader, we have been able to fully refit and get fully operational two Republic destroyers ready for immediate deployment if need, the third will be ready by the end of the month. The female warrior then spoke, that lady from the land of snow here has some pretty impressive technology, the fourth one won't be ready for at least another three months for even test runs without her help. Vader nodded his head at this, that's good to hear, now what have you been able to discover about the other wreckage? The two of them knew this question was coming. From the looks of things at least seven different separatist ships were taken at different times from the Lost Era battlefield, but we can tell this was done some time ago. Maybe even before the hidden villages were even established. The woman was surprised to hear this as she knew that their village was not too far away from the battlefield, and you guys did not even hear this? He turned to her and spoke in a no-nonsense kind of tone. That time we were all fighting a different kind of battle just to stay alive it was only after the hidden villages were established that things began to come down, I mean we now know that it was the sage of the six paths that pulled all the ships to earth in the first place creating the lost era so long ago in the first place. Naruto nodded his head to this and then spoke, I sense we'll find out what happened to those ships sooner or later, in the meantime do everything you can to get everything up and running and see to the younglings if you can since it will be some time until I can return. The woman gave a genuine smile, don't worry kid I will see to it that they all do their chores if you get my drift and that they don't kill each other. Very well I will leave it in your capable hands, may the force be with you. He then deactivated the communicator with much on his mind as he then pocketed wondering what was to come. He felt a genuine connection to this young woman and realized that he wished to get to know her better as he placed his mask back upon his face and then walked out of the room that the wind daimyo had given him during his time in the capital city. He came upon her door and lightly knock upon it waiting to see if she would answer, to his surprise she opened the door surprised to see her savior standing before her and motioned for him to come in and have a seat but before she could start taking to him he decided to pull back his hood and give her a bow and then introduce himself, allow me to introduce myself properly Ms I am Darth Vader and I am a lord of the Sith Knights and a Jedi in training as well. She nodded to him and then introduced herself as well, it is a pleasure to meet you Lord Vader I am Fu, may I ask why you come to see me? He looked into her eyes and then said, you remind me of someone I once knew a long time ago who in a sense saved me from myself, he was much like you in many ways even down to your burden that I know you had no choice in just as he did not. She was truly surprised by this and became curious as she then asked him more, who was this person who changed your life so thoroughly? He look was more thoughtful and closed his eyes for a moment and then said, his name was Naruto Uzumaki. The look on Fu's face was one of total shock and surprise as she then said, you knew the hero of the hidden waterfall village, what happened to him? His village banished him for completing his mission to retrieve a fellow ninja who had betrayed the village but because of the injury they then punished him instead, at the moment I have no idea where he is and for all I know he is in hiding as the same people that were hunting you are hunting him as well. He was the one who told me about the wind temple that I intend to return to soon so that I may continue my own training in their arts.
Just because I am a Sith and Jedi does not mean that I have stopped training in other areas as an old saying goes there is no knowledge that is not power in the right hands. Fu was truly impressed by what he had said but then became curious as she remembered the things the two Akatsuki members were saying about his deeds, is it true what they said about you? He was surprised by the question but then realized what she meant and then answered. From a certain point of view yes, some of it has been greatly exaggerated I did walk into a room that was filled with many high Jonin level ninjas and proceeded to wipe them out as they had been orchestrating the war in the land of water and a response before killing quite a few people, but I can tell you that it was no walk in the park at that time I have a few scars here and there thinks of them but that was about a year ago. As for that group of samurais was more like 100 instead of a 1000 and only half of them were elite class samurais and it was no walk in the park for me. Some people say I'm easily a cage level opponent and I might be but I'm not done learning just yet. Fu then realized that people who were after her would never stop and that she had to become stronger just to protect herself and decided to ask him if it was all right to accompany him to the wind temple. Is it all right if we go with you to learn? Not at all. In fact, I believe it would be most beneficial for you and for your future. The image of the Akatsuki leader himself pain looks to the four members he was sending on their new mission. Kakuzu Hidan, Atach and Kisame we have received intelligence that the hosts of the One and Seven Tales will be traveling to the Wind Temple for training with the monks there and this will also be a perfect opportunity to obtain them which is why I am sending all of you to obtain them but also in case you encounter Lord Vader once more. Hidan could not keep his thoughts to himself, good I want to sacrifice that motherfuck personally. The leader however had a different idea and decided to voice his opinion. You two will not engage him again you will simply go after the two hosts and leave the battle with Lord Vader to Atach and Kisame as I believe they would be the better opponents to face this warrior. If you can somehow recruit him to our order and if not destroy him. They all nodded and prepared for their mission. Gara and Fu and his sister Tamari were quickly becoming friends as they walked alongside the calm Sith Jedi warrior who was smiling underneath his mask as they were getting to know each other and was happy that two of his friends were getting along with another like himself and Gara. Fu had also gotten to know him a little better and had great respect for the Sith Jedi warrior as they continued their journey to the Wind Temple. Fu had been curious about his abilities ever since his fight with the two Akatsuki members and realized that they were not the abilities of a normal ninja even someone like herself and decided to inquire about them but before she could even ask her question he turned to her and said, I was wondering when you were going to ask about my abilities in that fight. She nodded to him both in surprise and curiosity as he then continued. My abilities come from a mystical energy source known Arse? Tamari asked. The force is generated by all living things, it binds us penetrates us and has a will of its own that is why there is a light and a dark side. The light side was almost entirely used by the Jedi Order except for the rare cases of certain Jedi who fell to the dark side, back in those times if a Jedi fell it was a very dangerous situation but the force is now in balance once more, Vader said. So I take it there are significant differences between the Jedi and Sith then? Gara asked his old friend, despite what many people might believe Naruto had stayed in contact with his old friend who was just like him. Vader nodded his head and then said, significant ones in fact. The Jedi existed solely to protect people no matter the cost but at the same time they were required to not form attachments to anyone not even their own families brothers sisters mothers fathers husbands or wives children. In a sense they feared attachment because during that time would lead to the dark side of the force, but on the opposite side is the Sith who embraced the dark side and acknowledged that fear could give them great power and sought to both use and control it. The Jedi had a saying, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate the leads to suffering, but the Sith had a saying that reflected their own views upon fear, fear, fear attracts the fearful the weak the strong the corrupt the innocent, fear is my ally. They were clearly surprised by the last one then came to a realization, so the Sith saw fear for what is an emotion and they can be used like any other tool. Tamari asked him. He nodded to her and then said, yes, but a tool with a will of its own. With the force back in balance many people who would have fallen to the to the dark side no longer be can be completely controlled by it and the Jedi could safely live their lives once more having families for starters. Here on this world it is possible to live on both sides of the force for example I am a Jedi to the innocent and to the dark and evil people I am a vengeful Sith Lord waiting to cut them down for their crimes. 
They now understood his position and view upon the world but at the same time they noticed him instantly becoming more aware of his surroundings than before as they were in a small canyon area that did allow for certain opponents to hide themselves very well he however recognized that there were at least four people who had clear hostile intentions towards them into them he instantly recognized. I know you're there, so you come to be cut into pieces again or have your hearts ripped out by my hands. It was at this moment that the four Akatsuki members made themselves known to their target, Itachi decided to try negotiating for their targets first since he knew that this Vader person would be a definite threat to them and needed to be dealt with first, our leader has issued an opportunity for you to join our organization all you need to do is step aside and allow us to obtain our targets. It was at this moment that Vader walked up to them and took off his battle cloak revealing his battle clothing to everyone but it was the look in his eyes that immediately put them all on edge especially since the other three were getting into a combat position as he then said, I will not allow you to destroy these innocent lives that have already suffered greatly at the hands of others if you know it's good for you leave right now, don't make me destroy you. Hedan was easily letting his anger take hold as he then screamed out, I am so going to sacrifice this fucker right here right now. It was at this moment that the three others noticed Vader sticking out his hand in the direction of Hedan and then began to say, you don't need to sacrifice us. They were all surprised when Hedan began to look as if he was being controlled and then said to the man said, I don't need to sacrifice you. You will instead attack your partner for he is a threat to us. I will instead attack my partner for he is a threat to you all. With that said he instantly went on to attack his partner who was surprised by this turn of events and realized that they had underestimated their opponent once more. Everyone else turned to Vader as he said, your murderous priest has a weak mind thanks to his anger and desire to appease his god, and the force gives me the ability to manipulate the weak-minded. To everyone's surprise Itachi then expressed his own thoughts about what had just transpired, oh shit, I so did not see that coming. Kisame turned his head to look his partner and then said, okay who the hell are you and what did you do with the Itachi Uchiha that I know? Itachi never turned away from his opponent but then said, he has the ability to control people if they are of weak wills that is not even something I can do without a major genjutsu, he has effective kept his opponents at two instead of four opponents if we wish to accomplish our mission we must now attack him with everything we have. But part of me is hoping that they kill each other. Kisame could only agree with his partner's assessment and then made his own opinion on the matter known, I'll take on this Lord Vader I can take away the use of his weapons and easily destroy him. They then noticed the Sith Lord turning back to his traveling companions as he took out his original lightsaber and then said to them, take on Itachi and if you have to the other two members as well while I take on the sword user. Kisame took this a bit personally as he took his weapon off his back for battle and said, I am so going to enjoy killing you now. Vader smiled under his mask as he then said, you will try. He then activated his lightsaber and performed a backwards flip aided by the power of the force and then began to engage the shark man in epic sword duel that surprised the blue skinned former mist ninja to no end and was even more surprised when he realized that his sword was not draining the chakra that was supposed to be powering this weapon as he had been told and realized that his own weapon was having to use its stored chakra to protect itself from being destroyed by this strange weapon made of light Itachi was totally shocked by his opponent's actions as the one known as Lord Vader had made Hidan try to sacrifice Kakuzu and was currently fighting for his life against not one but two Jinchuriki continued to attack him relentlessly he managed to get a quick look over at his partner only to see that Vader was easily matching Kisame in the art of swords, but what he saw was that neither of them had a clear advantage in who was the better swordsman in combat. Right at that moment Itachi had to dodge what looked like a tentacle of the sand coming right at him. Fu and Tamari were launching attack after attack at their target with a relentless fury that only a woman could possess as they attempted to end Itachi's life once and for all as he also attempted to stay alive in this engagement. Kisame despite what others might believe was finally having a worthwhile sword fight against an opponent who clearly understood the art of the blade better than anyone he fought in the past except for his fellow swordsman of the mist. He could clearly tell that while he had predominant power both in strength and experience his opponent however had superior speed and reactions making these two a formidable pair to take on. Kisame was now smiling like a madman and then said, despite the fact that I have to kill you I like this. Vader stared the blue skinned warrior down and then said, you believe you win this battle but we are evenly matched thanks to our training and our respective arts. Oh I am beginning to like you a lot more now, but I have a job to do and I think you know that the blue skinned warrior said. Vader was now beginning to smile under his mask even more now, 
However he came to the realization that neither of them would win this battle hopefully though the two zombie brothers would be dead this day reducing the number of enemies you have to fight in the future. I do hate saying this but we are in a STS has a clear advantage anymore and our comrades are in a very serious situation. As much as Kisame hated to admit it was clear that neither of them would win this battle and that it was time to cut their losses and make a run for it. But before either of them could make up their minds they heard Kakuzu scream out as he was crushed by Gara's sand coffin which destroyed the last of his hearts finally ending his long wicked life which also at the same time brought Hidan back to normal as the suggestion that had been put into his mind by Lord Vader had finally been met although not by his own hands. Hidan began looking around and realized that something was very wrong, he then looked over and saw that his partner had been the lack of a better word crushed to death and that their mission had become a true failure especially as Itachi gave the order for them to retreat which they all took. As soon as the surviving Akatsuki members made a run for it Vader walked back over to his companions and then said, I believe it's safe for us to resume our journey to the wind temple, please follow me. Payne was totally shocked by what he learned after surviving members of the two teams had returned and it was clear that he had underestimated his opponents so he possesses many other weapons and is quite skilled in the art of the sword and up to your level as well Kisame. The blue-skinned swordsman simply nodded his head and then said, I think he was holding back a bit as he does not want us to know more about his abilities, which means it will be harder to develop a strategy against him in the future but it's clear that our team would still be the best hunting him down and I believe he will only get stronger in time. Payne then turned to Itachi and asked him, with what you've seen Itachi where would you place his strength level at? I believe he is at the same swordsman level as Kisame and would easily be a mid Jonin level opponent, and I believe he will only get stronger with time and I believe he also knows where the nine-tailed fox host is as well thanks to some of the tactics he was using. Payne suddenly had a realization that they needed this man alive and that he would now be hunting them down and killing them without mercy as they had some fairly underestimated their opponent. Vader sat in a meditative-like state not only connecting to the force but also the environment around him thanks to his training as a wind monk as well. He opened his eyes as he felt the presence of the head monk standing before him. He made a slight bow with his head and said, Have I done something wrong master? No not at all, but I must ask why haven't you told the young lady who you really are? The monk asked. It was a question in a sense he had been asking himself for a while now he admitted there was a connection to the young woman and he would be quite happy to get to know her a bit more. The head monk put his hand on Naruto's shoulder and then said, I know how difficult your path in life is having to balance both light and darkness and good and evil, but don't let your past destroy your future and finally do something about those seals on your hands so you are no longer limited as I believe your enemies will become more dangerous and time as well as your former home which I can tell you now has been looking for you will need all the help you can get my friend. Now continue your training. Naruto brought his hand up to look at the seals upon them that prevented him from using ninjutsu thanks to his former home village actions. He had come to the realization that he had been too stubborn for his own good and that it was time to finally remove his handicap once and for all. Tsunade was completely shocked by what she had just learned from Jiraiya, the Akatsuki had apparently stepped up its efforts to capture the rest of the Jinchuriki as soon as possible. The recent activities of the organization had only increased in their level of activity and desire to capture the hosts and so far they had succeeded in capturing several of them. Tsunade knew if something wasn't done soon they would be at the mercy of the organization. She turned to Jiraiya and then asked of him, so they've managed to capture quite a few of the Jinchuriki already and are making their moves against the rest? Yes, they have really stepped up their efforts to capture the rest of them even going so far as to try to kidnap the daimyo of Wind Country himself as well as his daughter and almost had their hands on the Seven Tails Jinchuriki as well if it wasn't for the warrior known as Darth Vader, Jiraiya said. This caught Tsunade's attention as there were many amazing stories about this Sith warrior, how did this Darth Vader become involved in this conflict with the Akatsuki? I don't even know if Darth Vader is his real name or not or if it's just a title, but what I do know is that he was hired by the Wind Daimyo to protect him and his daughter and happened to encounter the zombie brothers of Akatsuki as they were attempting to kidnap them and capture the Seven Tails only to come face to face with this Sith warrior who showed them no mercy using abilities that no ninja that I know of can do. I also recently learned that he another encounter with them but this time with the addition of Itachi and his partner Kisame who was there to deal with him specifically while the other two captured the seven and one tailed hosts, he said. They have increased their activities if they are going after the case cage this soon, I take it from the way you are reporting this to me. They did not succeed in their endeavor? she asked him. 
Jiraiya just nodded his head and then said, Oh yeah, Vader was able to match Kisame in an epic sword duel that ended in a draw between them. Itachi was engaged by both Gara and the Seven Tells and as for the two zombie brothers let's just say that Vader has some kind of power that made one of them fight the other until Gara found an opening and crushed him to death forcing the other three to retreat. So this Vader managed to help kill one of them, do we know what happened to the Seven Tails and what her name, she asked. We believe her name is Fu and as far as we know she went to the Wind Temple with Gara and Vader. I believe she may be learning to control her abilities and if the stores are true he may have had some kind of contact with Naruto and that the brat may have been training at some of the elemental temples as well which would explain why Vader sent both Fu and Gara there in the first place. At least that's the story I've heard. The old pervert said to her. Their only option at this moment in time was to call a cage summit meeting in the land of iron to discuss and prepare for the coming battles yet to come and to prepare for the future. Fu had been enjoying her sleep as her time in the wind temple only to be awoken by the sound of battle, she quickly jumped out of her bed and got dressed as soon as possible and ran out into the middle of the garden only to see everyone including Gara and his sister enjoying a light breakfast and some green tea as if nothing was wrong at all. She was in a sense truly surprised by their actions until the head monk simply said to her, Vader is just in some heavy training outside the temple walls right now. He removed a weakness late last night and it's finally allowing his full potential to come through if you wish to see what he is truly capable of just walk up to the observation deck of the temple. She was both surprised and annoyed but simply nodded her head and ran up to the deck only to see what could be described as a small army engaged in battle below her it was clear that the Sith were no laughing matter and were deadly warriors in their own right. She saw several of them shooting what appeared to be lightning from their hands and another one seemed to be literally levitating others like they were nothing in large groups and at the center she saw one that appeared to be using two lightsabers instead of one in close quarters combat which made him even faster and more dangerous. The figure in M to jump into the air and then let out a yell which was followed by a strange kind of energy wave that then proceeded to disintegrate the clones that were nearby within a few seconds and pushing almost 100 more clones back until they disappeared in clouds of smoke indicating that they had been dispelled. A single figure then fell back to the ground and quickly put his lightsabers back onto his belt that adorned his waist and watched as the rest of his clones continued their activities and walked back towards the temple feeling free for the first time in a long time that he was no longer restricted or contained by the actions of others as he had once been upon his banishment from the hidden leaf village. As he walked back into the wind temple and used the force to open the doors and as soon as he was inside he then used the force once more to close them behind him and looked up only to see the shocked face of Fu staring him in the eyes with her mouth open realizing that the strange warrior with who had saved her was her former village's hero. Naruto Uzumaki was now standing before her. Naruto just rubbed the back of his head with his hand and then said, Well you wanted to know who I was and I was planning to tell you in private. Fu was shocked to see the face of someone she considered a hero and that he had pretended to be someone else, you said he saved you from yourself. When I first became a Sith warrior Fu I gave up my old life even my name to pursue my hatred and become powerful in the dark side but then I remembered my old life and in a dream I encountered my younger self as he asked me who I was and what I had become. During that time I would have killed any of my old comrades had I met them and my freedom was at stake. That's when the force came back into balance for me and I was able to finally be what I was once. So what I told you was true from a certain point of view, he said to her. She was shocked by what he said and then said herself, a certain point of view. They were both now sitting directly across from each other enjoying some food as he then said, both the Jedi and Sith look at things from a certain point of view. My point of view is to look at things in balance to see both sides and to try to make the right choices and sometimes there is no right choice and at the same time there is no wrong choice either. But when you came to my room you could have just told me, Fu said. I will honestly say that the thought had crossed my mind but then I came to the realization that just knowing who I was could have its own dangers, remember what I once said there is no knowledge that is not power in the right hands. Well any knowledge in the wrong hands is dangerous and there are those who take that knowledge from you by force if necessary, he said to her. She then came to the realization that he was right and that her current position and powers already dangerous enough for her and the last thing she needed was more danger added onto her already dangerous life, so you used this new identity to protect yourself and those you still cared about while still being free to move about where you need to, I wish I had that kind of protection. It's not permanent one day they will find out who I am and will come for me of that I can promise you," he said to her with a sense of seriousness in his voice. 
It had been nearly a week at the Wind Temple and the three Jinchuriki had come along nicely in their training to not only harness their new abilities but also to gain more control over their already existing ones, Vader or Naruto as he liked to be called sometimes by his birth name instead of his Sith title and had progressed well obtaining the rank of a high Jonin rank ninja and could easily be on his way to a master rank in his force abilities both on the light and dark side of the force. Gara was watching his fellow hosts as they not only trained together but began to grow closer and smile knowing that his first real friend had finally found someone who could finally heal his broken heart once and for all. Right at this moment a messenger hawk flew down and landed right in front of him with a massive scroll in its talons waiting for him to retrieve it, it was at this moment that he noticed the seal that stated that it was quite important and that it did not come from the sand village but had come from the hidden leaf instead. His curiosity had finally gotten to him and lightly retrieved the scroll from the hawk which then flew off and began to read the scroll with a look of both surprised and then anger as he realized that they were finally taking the threat of the Akatsuki organization seriously and had called a cage summit meeting in the land of iron, it stated that he could bring up to two bodyguards to accompany him to the meeting which was to be held in one week's time. The scroll had made one unique request that Lord Vader himself be one of the bodyguards to the K's cage as he had personal first-hand knowledge of the organization as well as Gara himself which could then come in handy in helping the assembled cages in their search for knowledge upon their mutual enemy. He had by this time gotten up and walked over to his fellow hosts and handed the scroll over to Naruto who then began to read and realized that things were beginning to much worse as their enemy began to become much more aggressive in their pursuit of power that belong in hands of those who had been sacrificed against their will to hold back the destructive forces of nature that been created here by the Sage of the Six Paths so long ago. He then handed the scroll over to Fu and then turned to Gara and said, Despite what my personal instincts and experiences of the hidden leaf are telling me I don't think this is a trap in the slightest as I believe the threat that the organization is posting is genuine but I also sense that a great deal of trauma is about to fall down upon all of us. So we should go and you are coming with us? Gara asked of his friend. Naruto looked him right in the eyes and then said, of course I do we will also learn a bit about our allies and enemies by going there as well and what their actions would be to the other hosts who are still out there. I agree. However Fu I believe it would be wise for you to remain here where it is safe as I have a feeling that it would be practical for you to continue your training here also be sending several of my top Jonin to help in your ninja side of the training after all we cannot rely too heavily on our tailed partners as the Akatsuki are trained and paired together to take us down by doing this it gives us a huge advantage in the future against them which will then give us the advantage. We leave for the meeting in exactly two days that will give us more than enough time to arrive before the meeting starts. Gara said as his first true friend nodded his head and then began to ready himself for the journey to the land of iron. Each one of the five cages of the hidden villages walked into the room where the meeting would be held to discuss the future of the elemental lands. Up in the special viewing area was the individual cages bodyguards watching for any kind of trouble however there was one extra person standing next to the Hokage of Konoha which Lord Vader instantly recognized as the Toad Sage Jiraiya himself standing next to the Hokage Tsunade who appeared to be quite surprised that everyone had bothered to answer her summons considering how important this meeting really was. Gara had already been informed that the current Mizuka Jmei was a good and personal friend of his and was also keeping a close eye on a group of warriors that he had helped bring back to prominence that now served to protect the new daimyo of water country and promised to help him if the elemental nations ever needed them again, the only unfortunate thing for the land of water was that it had already lost its two Jinchuriki at the hands of the organization they were now here to discuss. Tsunade and Jiraiya quickly introduced themselves too. The assembled leaders of the hidden ninja Vilscribe. The threats that the Akatsuki organization represented. Not only to their village but to the entire world as. Well and basically form them of all they knew including. The known members of the organization and that only. One or two had even been killed in the last five years. Which instantly set them all in a sense of concern. As they knew that anyone who had achieved the rank. Of a to s ranked threats in the bingo book were not to be taken lightly and then organization that consisted of nothing but s rank threats and up was not an organization to be taken lightly by anyone especially as it was learned that they were paired in teams of two and were extremely mobile and difficult to track as well as to engage as they were picked to complement each other's abilities and to cover their weaknesses to ensure that their missions were successful and that it could take very highly skilled ninja teams to even engage one of them with a marketable chance of success. 
The Land of Lightning and the Hidden Cloud Village were the only ones without even the slightest connection to the organization and or at this moment keeping both of their Jinchuriki hidden within their village or in their territories and protecting them from the organization as well as pairing for the future attacks they knew were coming. Tamari and Naruto who was at this time wearing his full battle outfit as Darth Vader as they observed the other bodyguards while he recognized the ones from the land of water it was the ones from the land fire that concerned him the most as one of them had been someone he considered a brother who had tried to kill him to gain the ultimate power of his family's bloodline and the other was a man who should have been trying to help him become stronger but instead had focused on the young man beside him who had been handed everything in his life all because of one terrible event that had claimed his entire family and left him an orphan bent on revenge. They were Sasuke Uchiha and Kakashi Hitaki. Naruto quickly came to the realization that Jiraiya must have somehow had a spy inside the organization giving him bits of information that could then be used against them which was currently happening as he continued to talk but then decided to mention the fact that the person known as Darth Vader had successfully engaged not one but two teams on two separate occasions and had emerged not only surviving but managed to do significant damage to in teams but also had successfully helped in the killing of one of the more dangerous members of the organization. Virtually everyone in the room was curious to meet the man known as the Sith Lord that had successfully freed not only an entire country but protected a daimyo which was all part of his job description. Gara decided to use the art of theatricality not only to introduce his friend to them but also to see what would happen with his fellow leaders. Lord Vader would you please show yourself. Right at this moment a black shape hit the table and then rose to its full height with a strange kind of breathing sound coming from the mask upon his face. Everyone could see his eyes. They were eyes that surprised everyone as they had never seen any kind that were like this before. One of them seemed to be glowing blue and the other one of the most evil looking thing they had ever seen in their lives. That other eye was a red rim with a yellowish center that sent shivers down their spines. He then spoke with a clear sense of purpose in his voice, What is thy bidding Lord K's cage? Gara could only smile on the inside as he then said, The members of the organization you fought, do you believe they will continue to pose a threat to the other Jinchuriki and the villages as well? Vader closed his eyes and then inhaled deeply and then said, The dark side of the force clouds the future this can only happen when the force is not in balance. For the time being it is impossible to see the possible future. Gara had a feeling that something else was now going on and to ask him about it later as they continued to play their parts. Lord Vader are you not a dark lord of the Sith? Can you not use the dark side of the force to see what is coming? I am indeed a Sith warrior and a lord but not a dark lord. I have also trained in the Jedi arts as well as well as your shinobi arts. While the future is elusive right now I can assume. That because of the continuing escalation of our enemies due to this organization you will attempt to recall or capture the remaining Jinchuriki which many of you have made their lives a living hell and may not see your attempt to protect them as an honest endeavor and may attempt to run knowing that there's a good chance they may live longer on the run and know that their current enemy is doing this simply as a job where some of your ninja may attempt to capture or kill them no matter the costs. Tsunade took a great offense to what the Sith warrior was saying, you say you have met several of them. Our villages will not be a death trap I will not make them a slave or a weapon. And yet you will issue an immediate recall for them no matter the cost to the life they have now. I have met the one you're after and he is not your friend anymore or your subordinate and he would rather die than return to the village he knows will be waiting for his death at the hands of your honorable civilians. Vader said with honest sense of truth and hatred in his voice that was directed at the leader of the hidden leaf only to watch his very person hit when talking about jumped down to defend his leader with a look of pure rage upon his face. Sasuke had grown tired of what this warrior was saying and decided he would write at that moment and would put an end to it if he had to. You know nothing of our village and if you have any information on the whereabouts of Naruto Uzumaki you will tell me right now or so help me. Everyone in the room was shocked to see Vader's hand outstretched towards Sasuke's throat as the Uchiha desperately clawed at his neck trying to stop whatever was choking the life out of, only to discover there was nothing there as he looked into Lord Vader's eyes as the Sith warrior then said. I find your lack of loyalty to him most disturbing, and demanding things of me tends to get people killed. Gara realized very quickly if he did not do something to stop his friend soon that the Uchiha would die right in front of them not that he cared but it's better to stop a war from starting, Vader that is enough I believe you've made your point, release him now if you would be so kind. Vader then released his hand and put it back at his waist and then said, as you wish. 
Sasuke quickly took in breath as the pressure upon his neck faded in came to the realization that this strange warrior was more than capable of killing him and quite possibly the others in our own without a problem. The oldest member of the ninja leaders then spoke, Lord Vader has a point. Your village did after all banish someone who had completed a mission to retrieve a traitor even at the cost of his own life and what was his reward you banished him and have since been trying to navigate the fallout it's a miracle you have any allies left and will take another just to have a chance at bringing him in good luck, you're going to need it. At the same time the meeting was going on in the land of iron a starship with the symbols of the new republic and Jedi was rapidly approaching the planet with a clear objective that was the elemental nations. At the control of the ship was none other than one of the few remaining Jedi Masters in the galaxy but was considered one of the more reckless and somewhat unstable Jedi as well as his two apprentices who were still in the process of learning to control the Force as they were still young. One of them walked up to their master and asked of him, Master why are we headed into the unknown region to a planet that I've never even heard of before? The Jedi Master turned to her and looked into her eyes and then said, for years I've been feeling a disturbance in the force coming from so strong like nothing I have ever experienced, it is so strong in both the light and dark side of the force. A planet that's strong enough in both of the light and dark side of the force, why hasn't the council decided to visit this planet and see what is causing it, she asked him. He turned to her and then said, I have felt that this planet is in balance. True balance my apprentice but there's more as I feel that they're force users there as well like us, and in time we will know for certain. Jedi Master Silas and his two Padawan learners Sam and Mavis who had been exploring the capital city of the Land of Iron looking for the source of where the strong feelings in the Force had been coming from. During their time in the city they could feel that whoever they were looking for had been here not too long ago. As the three Jedi walked down the street they then overheard a woman talking to her three companions which caught the Jedi's attention almost immediately. I can't believe what that son of a bitch said about us, and he has the nerve to hide Naruto from us. Relax princess, we will find him in time, the big man said. The woman stopped dead in her tracks and turned to face the white-haired man and then said in a somewhat hostile tone, When Jiraiya? When we are at war we can't win, it's been five long years he should have come back by now and that son of a bitch Darth Vader knows exactly where he is. I just know it. The three Jedi immediately recognized the name as it had been one of the most powerful and dangerous Sith Lords in the Old Republic's history but why would someone have that name on this world? Silas could feel in the Force that these people were connected with the Force user they were here looking for in some way, he then walked forward with his two Padawans directly behind him. Tsunade and her three companions noticed the strange individuals with brown traveling cloaks walking up to them and instantly went into a defensive formation. The lead person immediately put his hands up and said, I mean you no harm, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. That was quite rude of you, mister. My apologies I am Jedi Master Silas and these are my Padawan learners Sam and Mavis. You said something about someone named Darth Vader? The Jedi Master asked her. The Konoha ninjas were surprised by what the Jedi Master had just said, Jedi. So do you know what a Sith is? Silas was now very concerned as he was one of the few remaining Jedi in the galaxy who had had an encounter with a dark Sith. Where is the Sith now? Naruto could not help but feel that something was wrong both from his own instincts as well as a disturbance in the force that had put him on edge. Gara and Tamari couldn't help but notice that their friend seemed more on edge since they had begun their journey back to the hidden sand village. Gara decided to let his curiosity get the better of him and asked his first friend what was wrong, you seem troubled. Naruto turned his head to face his friend and then said, I believe something has happened back in the land of iron, exactly what I do not know. Tamari had learned in the time she had known the Sith Lord that anything he suddenly became concerned about was something to take seriously, she began to prepare for a coming conflict knowing his luck in these kinds of situations. The four leaf ninjas were in total shock and awe as they flew in the Jedi vessel that was now searching for the sand party as they made their way back to the land of wind. Silas sat facing Tsunade as he had just finished explaining about the Jedi and Sith. Tsunade and her companions believed every word of the Jedi Master after seeing and coming aboard the amazing starship that was now flying through the skies of their world looking for their targets. She only hoped that the Jedi could convince Vader to relinquish his knowledge of Naruto's whereabouts without a fight taking place. But Silas had told her just how dangerous and mischievous the Sith could be, he had quoted a long dead master by saying, those who joined the dark side, lies to see creating mistrust are their ways now. She hoped beyond hope that there was still some form of humanity in this man who held the secret to someone she cared about deeply, 
but at the same time she was aware that Vader could have manipulated the young Jinchuriki into doing whatever he wanted him to do. At the same time she looked over to her bodyguards and noticed that each of them seemed to be wondering what was to come but it was the look on the face of the young Uchiha that gave her a moment's pause, the look upon his face was of hunger and wanting. Silas had begun to feel a strong pull in the force towards Sasuke and was curious if the boy could make good Jedi candidate in the not so distant future but at the moment he was more preoccupied on his current task and comparing himself for battle with the Sith Lord. In the forward cockpit his two apprentices kept their eyes not only on the instruments before them but also out the window looking for their prey, it was right at this moment that Mavis saw the three individuals walking through a large meadow which was large enough for the ship to land she quickly pointed to her longtime friend and moved in the back to tell her master. Sam quickly piloted the ship directly in front of the sand party and lowered the rent knowing that a confrontation was only moments away. Naruto Gara and Tamari quickly turned around as they heard an unusual sound directly behind them only to be shocked to see a ship of some kind flying through the air and coming to a stop directly in front of them and then landing. Once the ship had touched down a landing ramp lowered revealing the four leaf ninjas walking down as well as three robed individuals that they did not recognize in the slightest but the two send ninjas instantly recognized the tense demeanor of their longtime friend, he turned back to them and said, whatever you two do not interfere, this is unfortunately my battle. As the four leaf ninjas walked over to the side of the ship as the three Jedi walked forward to face the Sith Lord themselves, Silas immediately pulled down his hood and then spoke in a commanding tone of voice, My name is Jedi Master Silas and these are my Padawan learners Sam and Mavis, we're here because of you Sith Lord you will tell us what we wish to know. Naruto put himself directly in the path of the Jedi and those he had been hired to protect, he realized that their opinion of him was clouded because of his training in the dark side of the Force. However like the legendary Darth Raven he had also found balance in the light side as well, and as a Jedi would do in these kinds of situations he would not make the first move in any way and then spoke as his breathing sounds put the Jedi on edge remembering an old lesson that Master Sidious had taught him long ago. Break them before you fight them, and the battle will be yours. I am both quite happy and also quite worried to see that Jedi still exist in the universe, however your decision to side with them does not bode well for any of us why have they told you Master Jedi? The Sith Lord asked of him. Silas was surprised by the Sith Lord's statement and then spoke himself with a sense of curiosity, what do you have against the leaf ninjas? I assume they told you about Naruto Uzumaki, and that I am supposedly keeping him from them. The Jedi Master simply nodded to the question. The Sith Lord simply let out a chuckle and then responded, did they tell you everything including that they've responsible for his banishment in the first place, that his life was less than pleasant to put it simply. The Jedi Master quickly turned his head to look at the four Konoha ninjas only to see them quite uncomfortable by the question that the Sith Lord had brought up to him and realized that he would have to have a more in-depth talk with them about this at a later time. He then looked the Sith Lord directly in the eyes and then said, I will have to ask them some important questions later but your presence on this world is putting the you will tell me where this young man is and I will make the perfect decision and you will tell me what is really going on where did you come from Dark Lord. He then noticed that the Sith Lord's eyes seemed to narrow at the Jedi's demands and then responded in a tone of voice that left no misunderstanding about his intentions on the matter. You call me a Dark Lord I find that insulting, yes I was trained in the dark side of the force first but I was also trained in the light side the Jedi way as well. I am much like the young man they're looking for I was born on this world, it is my home and you have no right to tell me what to do. Silas was not expecting to learn this and stretched out his feelings to sense the energy of the force flowing around this young man inking to a startling discovery, this was the person he felt in the force here on this world in the first place. As he felt the force flow around this young man he felt that both the light and dark work in harmony and that it was possible that he had discovered the way of truth balance that only few Jedi were said to had ever experienced in the history of the galaxy, but before he could tell his apprentices that they were leaving the two of them quickly threw off their rubs and took out the lightsabers preparing for battle before he could stop them they launched forward in an attack. Naruto used his training as both a shinobi and force user to dodge every one of their attacks it was clear that they were close to a Jedi Knight level but were still apprentices in their form of combat, compared to someone like himself who had already been in the thick of heavy combat and life or death situations they were still novelists taking on a seasoned master. Silas watched the battle before him and quickly came to the realization that he would have to step in to stop his students from being killed at the hands of this Sith who had obviously seen combat in his life. 
His two apprentices had quickly become frustrated since they could not force this Sith into submission as they continued to attack him head on only to realize that he was testing them. The two apprentices quickly pulled back as Sith Lord held his ground and looked them over he then said in a tone of voice that was both condescending and applauding to their efforts, the force is strong with you too, but you are not Jedis yet. Sam became enraged by the comment and quickly began to once again engage the Sith Lord with everything that he had only for Vader to continue to dodge every single strike not even attempting to fight the young Jedi at all. However after a little bit of time Vader had finally had enough as the young impressionable Jedi was pushing him closer to his friends and putting them in great danger, after another missed strike he quickly used the force to levitate the young Jedi right up into the air and shot his other hand out to do the same to the young girl and quickly held them in the air and without a moment's hesitation force pushed them away hitting ship hard in the process. Silas was now truly surprised by the Sith Lord's level of control and realized that he had not been aiming for a kill but instead had been trying to avoid a fight but his patience had finally worn thin which meant that a fight was now a possibility he would himself tried to once more to convince the Sith Lord to peacefully come with them so that they could understand what was going on but if he had to he would engage the young man in a life or death struggle. Sasuke had before the battle even begin had already activated his Sharingan hoping to learn everything he could about these people's power for himself but while he watched the man who had humiliated him in the conference he became aware that they were something to be feared and loved at the same time, he had already picked up one of the knocked out apprentices lightsaber and wanted to see how he would match up in a fight against this strange warrior known as Vader and waited for his opportunity. Silas quickly took off his robe and pulled out his lightsaber and then said, for some reason the force has drawn me to you but do not think that I will go easy on you, but I do thank you for sparing my apprentice's life. Vader quickly pulled off his own battle robe revealing that he had a set of clothing with a bit more armor on it since his last encounters with the Akatsuki organization and pulled off two of his lightsabers bringing them into a ready position and then said, I had no intention of harming them but I will not allow them to endanger my friend spinning and if I must stop you so be it. After all I was the one followed the way of the Jedi here more. And that would be? He asked out of curiosity. They forgot that a Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defense never for attack. Your Padawans still have much to learn and I see a strong teacher in you but I will defend myself from you and them. The two of them quickly ignited their lightsabers and went into a defensive formation preparing for a long battle. The Jedi Master Silas watched intently as the Sith held his ground and refused to make the first move. Silas came to the realization that this warrior would not attack him unless he was attacked first. He deactivated his lightsaber and stared at the young warrior down, you won't attack me will you? No, your students are very talented but they have a lot to learn still. After Vader said this he quickly moved one of his sabers into a defensive position and stared into the cold menacing eyes of Sasuke Uchiha. Vader noticed that the lightsaber was that of one of Silas's padwins, the look on Sasuke's face was one of malice and distrust as he then proceeded to attack Vader hoping that the Sith Lord was just all talk and as the two engaged in a formidable lightsaber duel. The two padwins were amazed by the skills of the two combats dance of death, they could however tell that the Sith had the upper hand in this duel and appeared to be studying his opponent quite intently. Sasuke was surprised at the Sith Lord's skill level but being arrogant he decided to try to have his way by ordering this man to do as he pleased, you should give up now you are no threat to me, I am superior to you in every way. Vader on the other hand gave him a look and then said, you are arrogant and prideful I do not do as you say, as are your pride I see growing before my eyes which means your fall will be all the greater. You will tell me where Naruto is and if you do not I will destroy everything and everyone you care about. After all the Jedi say that you are the villain here and that makes me a hero so I can do whatever I wish to you and get away with it. You are also more arrogant than you know and your abilities and actions they all have consequences, and for some reason I feel the force surrounding you and yet I feel you becoming even to corrupt for the dark side. His words were puzzlement to even the Jedi but then they realized something, the dark side did surround him as a strong will and yet it kept its distance from him as well as if even the evil of the force was hesitant around this young man. However at this moment Sasuke decided to let his anger get the best of him and went into almost a fiery rage attacking the young Sith Lord hoping to finally end him, it was by doing this that he felt something around him something more powerful than he ever imagined. Without realizing he quickly tapped into the force letting it guide his blade and quickly became more powerful and more accurate than he had ever been in his life before that moment, however by doing this all the other force sensitive people present felt it as well. 
However it was Vader who was most shocked by this and quickly allow his own anger to fuel his power and strength and yet he remained in control as he realized he quickly needed to put an end to this battle as fast as possible. Sasuke at first realized he was winning until his opponent suddenly seemed to be far stronger than he had anticipated. Vader quickly began to fight with a ferocity that only a well-trained force user and someone who had seen many BA Vader may have put his second lightsaber away but was still proving to be quite dangerous with just one. Before Sasuke could even try to take command of the fight again Vader quickly disarmed him and used the force to quickly take back the lightsaber that that he had stolen from one of the Padans and used the force grip to begin choking the Uchiha as he was lifted off the ground by the power of the force. Vader then quickly moved his hand left and right sending the Uchiha crashing into objects and then finally into the Jedi ship knocking him unconscious in the process. Vader then used the force to send the lightsaber back to its owner and said in a commanding kind of tone to him, Remember young Jedi that weapon is your life, do not lose it to a traitor like that man over there. He then turned to Silas and said, I know you felt it as well Jedi, I know a lot about this young man and I know that he will eventually fall to the dark side and he will destroy your order. Vader turned and walked towards his companions with his lightsaber still in hand and ready for action at a moment's notice. He outstretched his other hand and his traveling ropes quickly flew into his hand as he walked away leaving a wake of power like a warning to all others in the area who meant him harm. The Konoha council room was surprised to see the holographic images of the battle between the Jedi and Sith, however they were not the only people watching the battle as there were several holographic images of the surviving Jedi council members present as well thanks to the holographic communication system. One of the masters who were clearly a human turned to Silas and asked, Master Silas I must ask for your personal opinion upon this Sith. As far as I can tell he is well trained in the arts of both the Sith and Jedi, I also sensed both sides of the force surrounding him and aiding him. In all my dealings with the Sith I have never felt someone with this kind of control. He said to the Jedi Masters. The Jedi Council members were surprised by his statement and looked at each other coming to a decision, then it is decided Master Silas. By order of the surviving Jedi Council and the Council of Konoha you are to apprehend the Sith Lord known as Darth Vader for both the questioning and the disappearance of the former Shinobi Naruto Uzumaki and for training as a Jedi Knight. Silas was surprised by their decision but also realized this could be very dangerous then felt he had asked another question, and what of the force sensitive we have discovered? One of the council members then said, he is to be trained as a Jedi of course. But masters I agree with the Sith Lord's opinion he's too dangerous to be trained in our arts, what if he was to fall to the dark side? That is why we will train him in the ways of force, the Jedi ways not the Sith, one of the council members said. It was at this point that a new voice entered the room, I agree with my old friend Silas, the boy is dangerous and should not be trained in the ways of the Jedi. Everyone present in the council chamber turned their heads to look at the new speaker who had just walked into the room. He was a Jedi obviously. Silas could only smile at his old friend Hotaru who clearly shared his same views and that of the Sith warrior on training the last Uchiha in the ways of the Force. The Jedi council members were clearly surprised to see him there so soon. Master Hotaru we were unaware that you had arrived before we would, one of the Jedi council members said. Hotaru decided to put his own two cents in. I was unaware that you were even coming here as you had told Silas that he was clearly losing touch with force when it appears clearly that he was not, and I have seen this boy and clearly he is dangerous. Unfortunately Master Hotaru the decision is not yours to make, we already dispatching several other Jedis to this world as well as ourselves are en route. We will not leave such a promising young force users without the proper training to control his abilities. Furthermore along with the Council of the Hidden Leaf Village we are issuing an immediate capture order for this Lord Vader so that we may re-educate him in the ways of the Force. One of the Jedi Council members said with a smile upon their face. Silas began to walk out of the Council Chamber motioning for Hotaru to follow him knowing that there was nothing they could do to change the Council's mind he did however stopped and turned to them and said in a warning kind of tone. I feel obligated to warn you masters that this Sith warrior will not allow you to take them so easily, if I had to guess I would say that he is a grey user of force something you have never faced before. A young woman no older than twenty was standing before a hologram of her former master, are you sure master that Hotaru and Silas will do absolutely nothing to train this potential Jedi or about this Sith Lord? The holographic image of this Jedi master then said, they refuse believing that he is a threat to the order and at the moment I do not know which way to go. As for this Sith I want him captured alive and unharmed if possible Kim. 
Is there anything I should know about him before I engage him? She asked her master. His holographic image looked her right in the eye and said, I'm sending you the coordinates of where we think he is but be advised he clearly has been trained in both the arts of the light and dark side of the force he may be a gray user, it's quite possible that he has a greater mastery of force than any of us could even understand. Naruto sit on the ground with his legs crossed concentrating on his task at hand using the force to rebuild his lightsabers after he had installed several new seals to act as safeguards in case someone attempted to steal them from him as well as to prevent their secrets from falling into the wrong hands. As soon as the lightsabers was put back together he reached out and took them from the area they have been floating in and instantly activated the blades seeing the crimson blade come to life and all of its red glory and then activated the second one bringing the blue blade to life in all its glory as well and then deactivated them and then strapped them to his side and walked out of the room only to see Tamari running up to him with a concerned look upon her face. The look of fear upon her face was enough for him to know that something had happened. Tamari, catch your breath okay and tell me what has happened. She looked right into his eyes and then said, There's a ship about to land in the center of the village. I can tell you that it's not the same one that we saw a couple of days ago. He quickly ran back into his room and placed on several new pieces of armor his mask and his black cloak. Once he emerged from the room he motioned for Tamari to follow him as he made his way to the center of the village to what was going to happen. Kim walked down the ramp of ship with several new Republic troops directly behind her. She then saw Gara and gave him a smile as she then walked up to him and said, By order of the Jedi Council and the New Republic you are to hand over the criminal Sith Lord known as Darth Vader over to my custody immediately. Gara was not amused by her tone and let it be known, the land of wind and the hidden sand village does not bow your wishes, that and Lord Vader is always welcomed in our lands. The young Jedi then said any more commanding tone, when it comes to dealing with a Sith Lord there is nothing that is beyond our authority. Now you will hand him over to us immediately. Gara was tempted to use his sand against this Jedi only to watch as her four Republic troopers were suddenly thrown into a nearby wall, knocking them unconscious from the impact. She turned her head quickly to see Vader walking up to them with a rather annoyed look on his face as he then said, Trying to intimidate them to hand me over, that is more a Sith trait than a Jedi one, but I can sense that you're still a rather young Jedi who appears to be quite full of themselves. Kim immediately activated her went into an offensive type of stance in and said, You are indeed very strong with the force but I was trained to fight your kind, I don't know why the elders what you unharmed but I intend to bringing you in no matter what. Vader then removed his cloak and activated his crimson lightsaber and without a moment's hesitation quickly began to engage her, every single send ninja was in total shock at their level of fighting skills. Vader had to admit that she was much more experienced than he had originally expected but she lacked was both the experience and power of combat to take down someone like him, the two of them blocked and each of their attacks with precise precision but it was clear to Gara that while this woman was indeed very powerful she did not possess the same kind of battle experience that his old friend did and that this was her great weakness in this particular battle. Eventually Vader found an opening and took it. In that instance he was able to grab both of her hands and with one movement of his blade cut off both of her hands and then grabbed her own lightsaber bringing it to her neck as she went to her knees screaming for all the village to hear. By this point one of the troopers had regained consciousness and was about to fire his weapon only to watch it fly at his hands and be crushed in midair by the Sith Lord. He then deactivated her lightsaber and threw it into the ship and looked at her and said, I had an opportunity to kill you all here today. Tell your Jedi Council that here you do not possess the same kind of powers you once had and that I will be watching you all. He deactivated his own saber and walked by the trooper and then said, Don't ever threaten people that I care about again, next time I won't be so forgiving now take your Jedi and leave. The rest of the troopers had by this point awakened and were already boarding the ship or helping the other one in loading Kim aboard the ship and also stabilizing her condition. It didn't take long for them to leave the village heading towards the hidden leaf which had become their unofficial base of operations on this world. Two men in black robes walked along a balcony on the outskirts of the hidden leaf village, the two of them then walked into a secret compartment as the older of the two then said, we must be more cautious my young apprentice, we did not expect the Jedi to find this world so soon. The younger of the two who had amassed with only one eye hole visible then said, why should we hide ourselves my master there are current still looking for this Darth Vader. Inform your man to leave him be we cannot risk a continuous confrontation with this Sith, and with the Jedi hunting him they will leave us be for a time. And what if this Vader continues to interfere in our plans my master? The older gentleman turned to him revealing that part of his face was bandaged heavily and then said, 
Then you will destroy him my apprentice. Always two there are, a master and an apprentice. I feel that this Sith is indeed very powerful that his masters are indeed gone but this will also prove quite useful for us if we can control him. But I fear that he will expose our existence on this world, it is only a matter of time my apprentice be prepared. At last we reveal ourselves to the Jedi, and if this Sith interferes with our plans we will dispose of him as well. The two of them then entered a large room that was built deep inside the mountain. All around them were several dozen containers from ceiling to floor of this large cavern filled with what looked like cloning equipment. Kim was amazed that the medical science and abilities on this world had allowed them to reattach her hands but she would have permanent scars from her encounter with Darth Vader, even though for the people who had come with her were shocked to see her so easily defeated as she had clearly given even Master Silas a run for his money. The holographic image of her master looked her over and realized what had been done to her, it was also clear that they had underestimated this Sith as he had clearly let her live but had also issued a warning that this world was not part of the Republic and from what Silas had told them it had taken nearly a week to map the area just so he could find the planet as it was part of the unknown region of the Outer Rim. I was cocky and arrogant master, he wasn't trying to fight me at first and he was trying to send a message, leave us alone, she said to the holographic image of her master. Silas nodded his head and agreed with her and then spoke, there is something truly amazing about this Sith warrior, we have to first understand that he is a product of this world and yet I have felt no true evil from him. Kim was surprised by his statement but came to the realization that he was right, however she then had a question regarding the new possible Jedi, I understand master, however I have a question about the Uchiha and who will train him. At that moment the holographic image of her master then spoke not hiding his own disappointment in the decision that had been made. I'm afraid that the council has made its decision regarding this young man Kim, despite my own personal objections he is to be trained as a Jedi and you are to be his master. Silas had a bad feeling that this decision would lead to disaster in the not so distant future, being mindful of your student young Jedi, his future is very clouded. Naruto and Fu were currently packing their clothes and some supplies for their trip to a secret location where Naruto had been in secret training some of the orphans from the water country civil war in the ways of the force. After his recent battle with the young Jedi Knight he had come to the decision that they needed to go into hiding to protect themselves. Gara walked alongside his friend and fellow host as they walked into the courtyard waiting for their transport to arrive, as they exited the hotel where they had been staying they came upon a rather unbelievable sight of Uchiha Itachi. Without wasting a second Naruto ignited his lightsaber and went into a defensive position like the small group of sand ninjas who had come to defend their home, but to all of their amazement he then spoke, I have left the Akatsuki Naruto, I have also discovered troubling things about the organization and that they are controlled by the Dark Sith. Everyone including Naruto was surprised by his statement and decided to hear him out, after almost 20 minutes. Of the hearing the supposed murderer of the Uchiha clan explained to them everything that had led to his current predicament and the night of his clan's demise to his discovery that the true leader of the Akatsuki organization was in fact a dark Sith lord who was determined to capture all of the Jinchuriki for some evil plan and that they were now planning to destroy the Jedi as well and what was worse for Itachi to corrupt his brother entered into the dark side of the force. Everyone in the room was shocked to learn the truth about his past and what kind of danger they were all now in. However it was at this moment that Naruto felt a strong disturbance in the force directly surrounding Itachi and walked up to him, I can feel it in you the force is strong with you Itachi, if you wish I can train you to use this ability. To everyone's surprise in the room the former Anbu captain went to his knees much as Naruto had done when he had begun his training in the ways of the force starting with the dark side, Itachi then spoke with a clear purpose in his voice, I will do whatever you ask of me just give me a chance to try to save my brother from himself and put an end to this war before it can begin. I will do all that I can to help you save your brother from himself, but are you ready to stop him if needed? Yes my master, I will do whatever you ask of me. Naruto then put his hand on Itachi's shoulder feeling the energy of the force around them and then spoke in a deep sounding voice that none of them had ever heard before, the force is strong with you indeed, I will not only teach you to CTO find balance and respect for it, I will teach you to protect and heal the innocent. And I will teach you how to unleash the full fury of the dark side up on your enemies. Henceforth you shall be known as Darth Raptor. Thank you my master. Rise. Naruto said to his new apprentice as they observed an old style Republic gunship entering the courtyard ready for their departure. At that moment Naruto unsealed a black crimson robe and handed it to Raptor who immediately put it on and discarded his old bottle robes from the Akatsuki organization. 
Fu and Gara were shocked by what had just happened and followed the two force users out of the out of the hotel lobby. It was at this moment that they noticed two individuals walking out of the gunship on was clearly a female wearing unusual black armor and the other was a male wearing heavy white armor with blue markings on it who immediately saw Naruto saluted him and then spoke. General Vader it is a pleasure to see you again and who are the individuals we will also be transporting to the site housing the younglings. These two Commander Bane, by the way did you bring the communication device I asked for? It was at this moment that the female handed him a small device which he then handed over to Gara. It's a long-range communication device that will allow us to talk keep it secret my friend, I will see you soon. Gara nodded to his friend and put the device in his pocket. Naruto then walked up to the commander and said, Commander Bay Nakima Fett, allow me to interview you to Fu who is just like me and my new apprentice Darth Raptor. All throughout Konoha the Jedi could feel the sudden change in the force, and to one new Padawan he knew who it was instantly, Itachi, what have you done? It had been nearly six months since both of the Uchiha brothers had begun their training in the ways of the Force and already they have become unimaginably powerful, the Jedi and the Leaf Ninjas however had become quite concerned since any attempt to find Darth Vader had proven futile. Naruto walked into the large training room that was used to train the Force hopefuls, at this moment several of them including Itachi were busy building their lightsabers through the power of the Force. Naruto smiled at seeing them so hard at work. Remember my students the force is your ally and this weapon that you are building is your life, as I have taught you before remember that to the innocent we must protect them with all of our power and to our enemies we must we will unleash the power of the dark side upon them but you must also remember that both the light and dark have the will of their own and you must respect it. You must learn to use your fear to guide you to keep you alive to protect those you care about and that your rage can be justified if the conditions are right. You must give people a chance for redemption but if they force you to you must stop them. The students all finished their sabers and ignited the blades revealing a rainbow of colors throughout the room, Itachi's own blade was as black as night itself. All of the current students including his apprentice were now looking at him intensely as he continued his lecture, protect those blades with your lives and those of your home which is now being rebuilt because of the tyranny of the dark Sith Lord Viral. The students all nodded to him and continued with their studies as Itachi followed his master out the door, has something happened Lord Vader? Yes, the Akatsuki has located the host of the two-tailed cat we are leaving immediately to not only save her but also to put a dent in our enemy's plans, however I feel compelled to warn you that we may run into Jedi or Leaf Ninjas. Prepare yourself for the unexpected my apprentice. Yes master. Itachi said as he went to prepare himself for this mission, it was right at this moment that Fu walked up to Naruto and hugged the man who had stolen her heart. How long will you to be gone for? She asked him. I don't know Fu maybe a week, what about you and our little one? He asked her looking at her slightly swollen stomach. I never thought that I would become a mother or have a family especially with all of this evil around us at this time and our kind. She said realizing that there was still a great deal of danger. Sasuke walked alongside his master Jedi Knight Kim as they entered the temporary Jedi temple that had been built on the outskirts of the village of Konoha. Upon entering the council room the Jedi masters then spoke. Kim do you believe that your apprentice is ready for a real mission? Yes masters I believe he is ready for a mission. Good we have located with the help of Danzo one of the Jinchuriki who happens to be the host of the two-tailed cat. Your orders are to bring her to the village for her own protection and to apprehend the Akatsuki members if possible. We are also issuing orders for you to capture Darth Vader if he interferes in your mission. Yes masters. They both said as he exited the room feeling that no matter what they would run into the Sith on this mission. Yugito had been forced to fight the Red Clouds as she had come to call them just to try to give her a chance at escape which proved futile as the three organization members were some of the strongest that the organization could muster at this point in time. One of them was clearly an explosive expert the other was a puppet master and the last appeared to be a sort of insane priest was mumbling about not being able to sacrifice her to his god. However before any of the Akatsuki members could even attempt to subdue her they all heard the deep breathing sounds and then heard Hidan mutter the words. Fuck me, not again. And with that said he went flying right into and then through a tree that was no more than 10 feet away, the two remaining organization members turned their heads to see Darth Vader walking out of the woods with his lightsaber in hand. Sasori remember all the intelligence that the other members had shared on this since Lord and decided to overwhelm him with sharing numbers hoping that it would finally be enough to finally kill him, 
However much to their shock they saw a second figure holding the same kind of weapon walking out of the woods next to the grater and were shocked to see that it was none other than the deserter of the organization Itachi Uchiha. Even more shocking was to see the two Jedi from the Hidden Leaf walking into the clearing as well. Sasuke instantly recognized his brother as Vader decided to introduce his apprentice. Well isn't this a spry meet both the Jedi and the Akatsuki here, and where are my manners allow me to introduce my apprentice formerly of the Leaf Village Darth Raptor. Sasori wasted no time in unleashing his puppet army upon both the Jedi and Sith warriors who were attempting to take their target away from them. Didera was now very concerned that Itachi had become a Sith Lord meaning that he was even more dangerous than before and that the Mad Bomber no longer had a sufficient defense against his new abilities. Hidan was just now getting into a fighting position and noticed the look upon the Force user's face and realized that it was going to be one of those kinds of battles. He brought his scythe into an attack position and readied for the coming battle hoping to sacrifice one or two of these people to his god. As soon as the three Akatsuki members and the army of deadly puppets were assembled the Sith and Jedi immediately removed their traveling cloaks and went for their lightsabers, with a sharp hiss the blades of many colors came to life waiting to help defend their wielders in this deadly dance of death. Kim noticed the deadly look that was the Sith warriors as they ran right into the middle of the action and was truly surprised by their abilities as they cut the puppets down like they were nothing but what also surprised her even more was their ability to control the force. Her apprentice's brother who was now called Darth Raptor was a sight to behold as his black lightsaber which was a rarity and finding a crystal like that cut down jammed everyone in its path he wasted no time in doing everything that he could to defeat this overwhelming opponent and his abilities. But it was Vader who still sent a level of fear up her spine as she watched the dual wielding Sith Lord cut down nearly twice the enemies as his apprentice and came to the realization that he had been in fact holding back and that he could have easily taken her head without a moment's notice when she had been sent to retrieve him in the land of wind. At the same time the other two main members of the organization they were now fighting went after the two Jedi with extreme prejudice. Hidan engaged Sasuke only to watch his brand new scythe be cut to ribbons before his eyes before being decapitated with one clean strike to his throat. For Kim it was taking on the the strange blonde man who was riding on what looked like a bird made of clay who was throwing strange animal-like creatures that exploded, she came to the realization if it wasn't for her training and years of experience in the force that she would be dead by this point as he was becoming a greater threat every second in you that she wasn't going to need much more help to take him down. What surprised her even more was to see that her apprentice was staring at the ensuing battle with his brother with conflicting emotions, Sasuke I need your help here right now. To her surprise he hesitated between helping his master or attempting to take down his brother but ultimately still decided to help his master realizing that there was still a chance to capture or kill him later. He then remembered one of his sensei's lessons about how earth was weak against lightning attacks and realized that the clay bird had a bit of earth element as well as his bomb like animals and knew that they now had a slight advantage and could possibly put this one member out of commission for good. Kim managed to grab a hold of both Didera and his clay bird thanks to the force grip giving Sasuke the chance he needed to put a Chidoral right through the missing ninja's chest ending his threat before it could escalate into a serious conflict with him however there was still a massive conflict going on with his partner who was fighting at this moment the Sith. However they both heard what sounded like curses coming from the head of the homicidal priest and came to the realization that he was not dead but at least no longer a threat to them at the moment. Sasori was shocked to see that his partner and one of their colleagues had been so easily defeated by the Jedi but what made him truly afraid for the first time in years was not the Jedi but the two Sith Lords who were at this time unleashing holy hell upon his army that had once destroyed an entire nation. The one known as Darth Vader was truly a sight to behold both in all and in absolute fear as he cut down on it after opponent in many cases able to crush them without even touching them just by moving his hand and then there was the lightning from his fingertips which came out of nowhere. However a large number of his puppets had finally surrounded the deadly Sith Lord and was preparing to enter him when he seemed to send you jump into the air hovering there for a second in what looked like a strange energy source around his body which then shot outwards disintegrating many of the puppets upon contact and severely damaging a good many more in the process. By this point the two Jedi had joined in cutting down his puppets and realized that the four unique warriors would become a significant threat to his plans to take the two-tailed cat's host for his organization. Sasori realized that he had to pull out his trump card that had been given to him by the secret leader of the Akatsuki. Sasori pulled out a rather large school and instantly unsealed something very large in a cloud of smoke, 
When the smoke finally did clear it revealed a large metal monstrosity that reminded the Jedi of a battlefield droid that looked like it had been designed to kill Jedi. The droid seemed to take one look at Vader and instantly unleashed a powerful energy wave at the Sith Lord who held out his hand stopping the energy from destroying him or hitting his apprentice or the Jedi which forced him back at least a foot. Vader then moved his hand forward and shot some force lightning at the droid's feet as soon as the droid attempted to reboot itself after the electrical shock from the lightning he instantly rushed at throwing his to light sabers cutting off the front feet of the droid. He then jumped into the air thanks to the power of the force catching his blades and slamming them into the head of the droid as he began to cut it to pieces. He then jumped off the head taking one of the legs off at its knee and jumped to the ground as stretching his hands with in just a second catching the whole droid and a force grip lifting it into the air and then proceeded to crush the battlefield droid like it was nothing and ultimately jumped into the air activating his lightsabers proceeding to cut it into two. When he landed on the other side of the droid it was finally in two large pieces he then turned his attention to the puppet master and began to advance upon missing ninja. Sasori was too shocked to even move as he was cut down by the powerful Sith Lord who had pierced his human heart with the powerful blue-bladed lightsaber that was now sticking out of his back. Sasori knew that within a minute he would be dead but decided to talk to his old comrade, Itachi, are you finally at peace? No, I will never be at peace for what has been taken from me and what I have been forced to do. Sasori smiled and then said, I believe I can understand what you mean by that, I had hoped to see my grandmother once more but at least I die with a sense of honor more than what Darth Viral has done to us. You and Vader may be all that stands in their way. With his last words said both Vader and Raptor gently laid him upon the ground and closed the puppet master's eyes. Vader then looked over and realizing he had to finally do something about Hedan. He then walked up to the head of the homicidal priest and kneeled down before the frightened as Vader then placed a seal on his head which then glowed with a brilliant light. As soon as the seal and light faded away Hedon's eyes widened and his head as well as his body began to quickly age and solve into nothingness until it was a mangled shriveled corpse upon the ground for all to see. Kim and Sasuke were in absolute shock at what they had just seen. Sasuke was now actually shaking with excitement at the prospect of facing his brother in combat. By the time that his master was over her shocked at what she had just seen her student immediately went on the attack trying to finally kill his brother and avenge his clan. Itachi had kept his senses open thanks to all of his years of experience as a shinobi. With both his battle-hardened reflexes and the enhancements given to him by the force he was able to ignite his lightsaber and block his brother's incoming blow with little trouble, but before they could even consider continuing Sasuke immediately used the power of the force to force push Vader away so he could engage his brother in peace. The two brothers were a flurry of motion as they blocked and attacked each other without mercy. Kim could tell that they were very skilled and powerful but yet still had much training ahead of them truly become either knights or eventually masters in the ways of the force. The two of them battled intensely trying to defeat the other the only difference between them was that Itachi wasn't trying to harm his brother but merely disarm him while his brother was trying to end his existence and was falling victim to not only the influence of the dark side but also the curse seal upon the back of his neck. Sasuke was desperately trying to find an opening to strike his brother down only two said they feel the force upon him once more and just like before he had no way to stop its power as he was suddenly thrown into a tree and then another, it was at this moment that he saw Vader walking up to him K as he looked upon what was left of the mask that had once hidden this man's identity from them. His mask had fallen off due to the damage of the attack that was launched upon him and was now in his other hand severely damaged from the attack he had unleashed upon the Sith Lord but it was the face of someone he had been desperately trying to find. Naruto. Why are you doing this? Sasuke asked his old friend. Kim was in total shock that the young man they had been looking for so long was in fact the dangerous Sith Lord Darth Vader, with one final movement of his hands as he knocked out the young Uchiha with the power of the Force. Kim ran over to her apprentice to see that he was all right but unconscious. When she lifted up her head she spotted Itachi carrying the injured Yugito towards the center of the field that was big enough to accompany a starship of significant size to land only to hear what sounded like a ship flying overhead that then came in for a landing and reminded her of an old Republic gunship. Kim brought herself to her full height and then spoke stopping him in his tracks, you may not trust us but it is safer for you and her as well as the other when you're hiding in the hidden leaf, let the village and the Jedi protect you. He then looked her right in the eyes and then spoke with a harsh tone. As I told Master Silas you should be very cautious about them they are ninjas and deception is one of their many tools, in this case as you are two trusting Jedi. We see the good in people while you see the evil in them, 
she said. You forget that I live here and I saw no evil in those people to last me a lifetime they show you nothing but kindness and joy, and while I admit people deserve a chance for redemption they don't deserve infinite numbers that you order is known to give away. And in case you're forgetting I was banished because of the people and a woman, who had to try to keep the peace, he said. Did it ever occur to you that you can change things you should join us? I cannot trust the village of my birth, when I stretch out the force I feel both you right side there but I also feel very strong presence in the dark side of the force. Until that feeling is gone and the truth is revealed about what was done to me I cannot trust any of you with my safety or those like me, he said to her as he entered the gunship and she watched as the doors closed and the ship flew into the air on its way back to the land of water. She then brought out a small communication device and spoke into it, track the gunship. Yes sir. Came the response from the device. Viral was surprised to learn just who Darth Vader really was, so the fox's host is even more dangerous than we first anticipated my master. Danzo who was in fact a powerful dark Sith Lord known as Darth Kronos who had gone to great lengths to not only influence the village council but also used his abilities not only in the force but also his stolen Shireen to influence the female Hokage into banishing the Jinchuriki so that his apprentice could easily capture him. What neither of them anticipated was the young boy now a full-fledged Sith Lord with the abilities of a Jedi Knight at his command who had in some unknown way brought the greatest enemy the Sith Order had ever known, the Jedi. But luckily the Jedi had proven useful for a change as they had revealed the location of the new Sith Temple on the borders of the Land of Water and knew that there would be at least two Jinchuriki that the Hidden Leaf could capture as well as potential warriors for the Sith Order to use as weapons. And at the same time thanks to his apprentice a plan to bring the rest of them running to the leaf knowing that there was no way that the Jedi or the new Sith could stop their new master plan. Naruto and Itachi had just exited the gunship on their way back to the Temple of Balance to rest after their exhausting battle with the Akatsuki members and the two Jedi who had just recently discovered his true identity as Darth Vader, one of the troopers who was a lieutenant. Watched the man who had helped save the land of water from destruction walk into what was once the Temple of the Water but was now the Sith Temple of Balance. As he watched the two new Sith Lords enter the temple he received a call from his small holographic communication device and activated it bringing to life the image of the Mazukaj Mei. The image of the beautiful and dangerous red-headed woman then spoke to the trooper with a clear sense of urgency, Lieutenant. Are Lord Vader and Raptor present with you? They have just entered the temple my lady. He responded to her with great respect in his voice. She nodded her head to him and then spoke in a serious voice that left no room for misunderstanding and also conveyed the seriousness of the situation. I need you to go to the general at once and inform him at once that we have a red cloud type emergency he'll understand. The trooper nodded to her and then said, it will be done my lady. The trooper then deactivated the communicator and quickly ran into the temple to deliver the Mazukaj's message. Silas Kim Mavis and as well as several Jedi Masters now sat in the council room debating what they had just learned, so the boy this entire village has been looking for is in fact Darth Vader, he must be very strong in the Force to be able to hide his presence from us. If he is so strong in the Force surely he can see being here in this village and joining with us would be the safer course of action, one of the more stubborn Jedi Masters said. Kim decided to share what the new Sith Lord had told her and that there was more going on than they knew. It's that kind of attitude that he finds absolutely repulsive, and I hate to admit that he might be right about my student he's giving into the darkness and I don't know if I can save him from it. Then you'll just have to try harder, and that's not all, he stated that we don't know everything and I have to agree with him these people they're masters of deception they have kept things from us about him. Then there's something he said that caught me off guard, he said there's a chance that the old Sith are here in the village. She said but then noticed one of the masters was deep in thought. I believe the new Sith speaks the truth, there is no light no dark side only force with them. You cannot be serious, they are Sith anything that they say is a lie, one of the more arrogant masters blurted out for all to hear. Silas turned to this master and then spoke in a tone that made his intentions quite clear on this subject, and yet you forget that the current person in charge of this military village is one of the people who tried to turn this Sith warrior into a weapon for his own purposes. And let us not forget that the fact that the former Hokage is mysteriously in a coma by unknown means with him now in power and demanding things of the Jedi Order. What none of them realized was that Sasuke was currently standing outside the room listening into their conversation, all the last Uchiha could do was listen and come to terms with what he was hearing as the conversation continued. Silas then spoke once more to everyone in the room making his position quite clear on this matter, 
this new Hokage has not earned one bit of our trust and what is worse he continues to demand things of us. For the moment we must keep the location of the Sith temple hidden until we know his true intentions and what the new Sith have said must be taken seriously. Kim nodded her head and then said, I agree with Master Silas, we have heard rumors of other Sith being on this world other than the ones we know are already here. The masters who had lead their arrogance take hold looked at each other and then realized the logic and wisdom in their words and agreed upon this course of action as well. Very well Silas, we will leave the investigation in your hands for the time being. The Old Republic gunship flew directly into a large courtyard that had been prepared for ships like it in the Hidden Mist village. As soon as the ship had co the door opened to reveal the two Sith Lords who immediately disembarked from their transportation and were met by none other than Akima Fett who quickly motioned for them to follow her into the cage mansion to start the emergency meeting that Mei had called for. Naruto Akima and Itachi had just walked into the war room and bowed to the Mizukage Mei as she then motioned for them to enter and then began to speak to them. Sorry to interrupt you both from your much deserved rest but we have an urgent matter to attend to and we're running out of time. One of the troopers a captain walked up to them holding a map of the hidden rain village and then began to speak for all to hear as he gave his report on this emergency. Lord Vader Lord Raptor I appreciate you arrive so soon the news I have may be our only chance to avenge our fallen as we have discovered the location of the Akatsuki leader as well as several members and we must move fast. Naruto took on a serious expression as he then said, Akima prepare your best Mandalorians for combat as we are going to take on one of the Dark Sith as well as hopefully finish off the Red Clouds once and for all. Mei could tell that the Sith Lord of Balance was now dead sent on heading to the Land of Rain to end their mutual enemy's life once and for all but knew that he had to know one more thing before his departure, she quickly walked up to him and put her hand on his shoulder and then spoke calmly to him with a sense of urgency in her voice, there's something else you need to know Naruto. He looked her right in the eyes as she then said, Tsunade has been removed from the position of Hokage and has been replaced by the old warhawk Danzo, she's in some form of a coma we don't know what's going to happen to her. Itachi knew that look upon his master's face and instantly knew that they were going to be quite busy this day. Danzo faced the window of the Hokage's office concentrating on his connection to the force as the door opened revealing the Jedi in training of one Uchiha Sasuke, the old man sensed his presence and smiled as he turned to Sasuke and spoke. Master Uchiha what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? The Jedi have decided to keep the village in the dark about the location of my old teammate, I feel so conflicted and I believe that they do not trust any more Lord Hokage. Danzo sat down in his chair and looked the young man in the eyes and then said, it is upsetting to me that after all this time that they cannot trust you and that they show no real interest in helping us stop the threat of the Akatsuki once and for all. Sasuke could not help but feel that the new Hokage was right about everything. I managed to learn the location of the Sith Temple and if what they were talking about is any indication the other Jinchuriki and may also be present, but what should I do? Are you not still one of my shinobi? He asked him. Yes Lord Hokage I still am. Danzo could only smile at hearing this, then I give you your orders, you will take a team and go to the temple your objectives are to capture the two hosts and bring them back here by force if necessary and as for the other Sith they are to be eliminate including your brother but bring us back Naruto. Sasuke bowed to the Hokage and left with the strange black anbu that had the symbol for root upon their heads. Silas and Mavis had left the council meeting room with a clear objective upon their faces. Mavis turned to her master and asked, What are we doing here master? At first he did not respond to her until they were safely hidden in a hole in the ceiling. I felt the pull of the force was bringing me here, something is going to happen here my apprentice. The two of them looked down into the large hall only to see a young woman and a badly injured man lying on the ground of the room with another with a strange mask upon his face walking around the room with three others just a few feet away. The men in the mask then spoke, I don't know why you have betrayed pain, and to a false Sith of all people. The injured man looked up to him with strange eyes and said, You corrupted our purpose long ago viral, those eyes of yours will not stop Darth Vader and the Jedi from destroying you all once and for all. The masked men's single eye narrowed dangerously and then spoke in a dangerous tone of voice that left no room for misunderstandings, do not think that this false Sith will be enough to beat us, after all you lie here broken in. It was right at this moment that both Viral and the two Jedi felt a strong presence in the force approaching them right at that moment. The two guards who had been positioned in the room suddenly flew back into midair hitting the back wall and slowly being choked into unconsciousness. 
Everyone in the most shocked by this as the doors flew open to see the hooded figure of Darth Vader the Sith Lord of Balance walk into the room as if he owned it behind him was none other than his own apprentice as well as up to five Mandalorians who were direct behind him. Viral walked forward with a superior smirk upon his face thinking that there was no way that this mere child could possibly defeat him as well as his master's earlier apprentice Orochimaru. Well look what we have here, the so-called Sith of Balance come before us seeking to know the true power of the dark side of the Force. Naruto turned to Pain and Conan and then spoke to his friends and comrades, get those two out of here as soon as possible I will deal with him and Snake as well as his butt buddy. The snake and his apprentice took this a bit personally and began to advance upon Naruto only for him to shoot his hands out calling upon the power of the force to send them flying into the opposite wall. The two of them used their the ladies in the force to stop from being crushed to death only to hit the ground and pull out their lightsabers. Orochimaru's lightsaber was a dark purple and his personal apprentice Kabuto who had a blood red double bladed lightsaber which blared to life along with his masters as they approached this old enemy only to watch him move both of his arms out with what looked like lightsabers appearing in both hands which then came to life any brilliant show off red and blue. Viral for the first time became concerned as he could feel the power radiating off the Sith Lord of Balance who then quickly went into battle cutting the ground of the room as he quickly proved to be more than a match for the two dark Sith hands. Not only did Naruto block and parry every one of their moves with ease he also forced them on the defensive with every move that he made. Fu and Yugito playing in the courtyard of what was once the Water Monk Temple with many of the younglings happily playing with each other. Yugito had often wondered what it would be like to have children but also feared what would happen to her seal and also was a tiny bit afraid for her fellow host as she watched Fu not only smile at the children but also rub her swollen belly. But while they watched the children play contently in the room they were all shocked and concerned as they felt what could only be described as an explosion rocked the temple and the door leading out of the courtyard was one of its hinges. The two women and the children looked up to see strange ninjas in black like gear that reminded them of the troopers but with a more sinister purpose leading them was none other than the young Jedi in training Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto continued to block and counter every single one of the snake Sanin's moves like they were nothing to him as well as the Sanin's apprentice. Darth Viral also known to many as Toby looked on in shock realizing that he had significantly underestimated his opponent and fellow Sith Lord. Silas and Mavis watched in utter shock at the superior skills of Naruto also known as the current Darth Vader and Sith Lord of Balance who wasted no time engaging the two Sith apprentices who were attempting to re-enter the order. Viral knew it would be unwise to attempt to eliminate Vader at this time with his apprentice and warriors Ned to retreat knowing that things were progressing according to his master's plan. The two Jedi watched the battle and analyzed at the young Sith Lord's capabilities for future reference. Silas had also grabbed his communicator and had called the other Jedi Masters in the Hidden Leaf Village so they could watch what was progressing before their very eyes. The small holographic images of the Jedi Council watched with bated breath as the Sith Lord of Balance schooled the two apprentices of the Dark Side without even batting an eyelash and came to the realization that he was merely playing with them and setting their tactics as well. Eventually the younger of the two managed to force push Vader off of a landing but instead of a victory they were also yanked off the side thanks to his own force abilities and landed without any problems quickly igniting his lightsabers and going on the attack. The red and blue blades crashed against the younger apprentice's dual staff saber just in the nick of time then the snake himself came in trying to hit him only to be blocked by the other saber. Vader quickly managed to separate the two and force pushed the snake Sanin into a nearby wall with enough force to knock him unconscious for a few seconds and then went on the attack against the younger one. The younger one became agitated and more aggressive making him also sloppy at the same time. Vader had not even reactivated his lightsabers and was simply dodging each and every strike as if it was nothing to him and only activated his sabers at the last possible moment to avoid being struck. What the young Sith Lord could not see was the small seal that Vader had prepared for him to neutralize his special ability and finally end his wicked life once and for all. By this time Orochimaru had finally regained consciousness only to watch in horror as his apprentice was picked apart by the Sith Lord of Balance. Vader managed to quickly block one more strike and then in a blur of motion so fast even the snake Sanin and the Jedi Council had trouble keeping up with it managed to place the seal on the apprentice's neck and then proceeded to cut his lightsaber into the middle and then impale his opponent upon his sabers. Orochimaru watched in horror as his apprentice or someone he could almost look upon as a son was fatally injured and then force pushed off the nearby ledge. 
Orochimaru quickly ran past his opponent and jumped off the ledge to reach his apprentice and was in utter shock as his apprentice was not healing himself thanks to his abilities and then saw the strange seal upon his neck that was now spreading and came to a horrifying realization that Naruto had undoubtedly discovered his heritage as an Uzumaki which were legendary for their abilities in seals which made it even his own seal knowledge look weak in comparison. While he could begin to understand most of the seals working he realized that it was far more advanced than he had ever thought possible and the only person he knew they could even begin to make heads or tails of this seal would be his old teammate Jiraiya who had undoubtedly helped the Sith Lord along his way to power. Kabuto could feel his body slowly breaking down as he was unable to heal himself and looked into his master's eyes, Master I am an unworthy apprentice, I'm not like you I never was. Naruto then walked over to the edge and spoke so the Sanin could hear him. You have forgotten the first and only reality of the dark Sith Orochimaru there can only be two a master and an apprentice. The snake Sanin had become truly enraged as he listened to the young Sith master speak, and judging by what I see you are no longer his apprentice and you have been replaced. Orochimaru grabbed one of the other pieces of Kabuto's broken lightsaber and went on the attack, the two Sith engaged in a tremendous battle of wits and knowledge of the force. While the Sanin was proving to be more of a challenge than his apprentice had it was clear that Vader's experience and knowledge of the force was greater than the snake's and then eventually found an opening and managed to disarm him, he then quickly force grabbed the Sanin and began to slam into various objects like the wall and floor. Orochimaru looked up into the eyes of Vader and began to plead, please show mercy. Like you showed mercy to all those people who pleaded to you to spare them. He then shot some force lightning at the snake only to watch him dissolve into mud. He looked up to see the snake running away as fast as possible, by this point two of the Mandalorians had come running into the room and began firing at the snake Sanin hoping to hit him in the process. The Mandalorians were just about to fly off after him but were stopped by Vader, let him go, he may be at a Jedi Knight's level but he is a master shinobi and I will not have you risking your lives to take him down and be killed in the process. They nodded to him and started down as he motioned for them to follow him into the main room where his battle had begun. The two Jedi remained in their hiding place holding the communicator recording and transmitting the events that had just occurred only to watch him stick out his hand towards them calling upon the force to yank the communicator out of Silas his hand. Without much effort Vader caught it and held it so he could look at the shocked faces of the Jedi Council and said to them, You Jedi think you are superior to everything and everyone and yet here I am doing the dirty work for you and the only Jedi that I would even remotely trust is the one you send to spy on us so I will give you this simple advice if I were you I would take it to heart if I were you. Leave us alone and attend to your own problems and if I were you I find out the truth about your gracious hosts, and don't worry I won't harm your Jedis. Then to everyone's surprise he crushed the communicator in his bare hand and then turned to the two Jedi and then said, you hidden your presence from me quite well Silas, but your apprentice here still has much to learn. Silas and Mavis then jumped down and revealed themselves to the Sith Lord of Balance and his Mandalorian's allies who instantly went into a defensive pattern only to stand down as Vader motioned for them to stop and walked forward before the two Jedi as Silas then spoke, you want something from us, but what? I want to know your intentions and that of your order, the fact that you are in such a friendly relationship with the Hidden Leaf does not help matters either. Silas had to admit to himself what the Sith had said was not far from what he himself had been feeling and then said, I cannot say about the Jedi Order and the Hidden Leaf but for myself and my apprentice we are keeping an open mind, I hope you are as well. Perhaps, but even I will admit that I am overly cautious when it comes to dealing with the Hidden Leaf, but one can hope, Naruto said. Before any of them could say another word they felt a disturbance in the Force very strong that it physically affected all the Force users in the room. The Mandalorians now stood ready for whatever orders Naruto might give them as he then spoke in a commanding voice, everyone back to the ship now, we're heading back to the temple. Silas immediately knew that something terrible had happened and quickly made a decision, we're coming with you. The two Jedi were surprised as everyone turned to look at them, why should we trust you? I wish to know what is going on as well and if the Jedi Council was involved after all I'm not a member, Silas said to them. Naruto motioned for them to follow him as they left the rain tower en route back to the land of water. The Jedi Council and the Hokage were in his office watching the recording of the two Sith's battle and were shocked to say the least however the current Hokage Danzo was not happy to hear Naruto giving the Jedi some much needed advice, the fact that he also crushed the communicator too and the conversation was also a clear message that he meant business from now on. One of the Jedi Council members then spoke for all ITH is right, 
the dark side of the Force is deepening here in the Hidden Leaf. Danzo had to put up with the Jedi Masters like this and realized that they would become an even greater problem in the future for him. He then spoke in an older voice than normal. Master Jedi how do you know that he is not trying to distract or perhaps divide us so that we are easier to conquer in the long run? Then why Lord Hokage has he not taken any form of revenge on this village for the supposedly many things that happened to him here? Said one of the more cautious Jedi Masters who looked Danzo right in the eye with suspicion about his true motives in this matter. However right at this moment Sasuke Uchiha entered the Hokage's office not noticing the assembled Jedi Council members at the time and began his report to the current leader of the Hidden Leaf Village. Lord Hokage the mission to capture the two and seven tails hosts was successful as well as the secondary objective of eliminating as many Sith warriors as possible however I was unable to capture my old teammate as he was not present along with my brother. Kim quickly grabbed her apprentice by the arm and forced him to face her as she then said, Sasuke, what have you done? The ships that had left the rain village quickly landed and offloaded its passengers who then proceeded to run to the temple only to observe the amount of carnage and destruction that had been done to the temple and its young inhabitants. Silas and Mavis immediately entered the temple right behind the two Sith and the Mandalorians only to come face to face with the devastation that had been caused here. Silas and then examined one of the bodies and discovered that the young one had been killed by ninja weapons until he looked at one of the next victims and was shocked by what he saw as well as his apprentice who could not believe what she was seeing, by the force master, is that what I think it is? The look upon his face told her all she needed to know as he then spoke, most of them have been killed by the shinobi who invaded this temple however I recognize these wounds they were created by a lightsaber, and since we saw the majority of the Sith in battle with Lord Vader I believe it was done by a Jedi. Right at this moment they heard the sounds of children in the Mandalorians who were now acting as their bodyguards walking towards the ship and the sounds that followed as he observed Naruto walking towards a wall. Silas then walked forward and observed a holographic recording system and realized that something else had happened here that had the young Sith on edge, Naruto those recordings will undoubtedly hold the answers you seek but they will also hold a great deal of pain as well, are you sure you wish to see this? Naruto then looked him in the eyes and then said, I have to know what happened and besides I must know what happened here to those like me that were here for protection. It was at this point that Itachi walked up and also begins to watch the recordings and what he saw scared him beyond belief, it can't be, it just can't be him. Naruto turned to his apprentice and said in a comforting voice, I am sorry my apprentice but it is. Before anything else could be said one of the Mandalorians ran into the temple and said in an urgent voice, my lord one of our star destroyers that is en route to pick us up has detected what appears to be a small fleet of old separatist starships. This caught everyone's attention as Silas then turned to the warrior and asked, what was their course? The hidden leaf is their destination, he said to them. It was Mavis who then said for all to hear, you write all along Naruto, how else would they know that two hosts had suddenly appeared in the hidden leaf? They're also gambling on the fact that I will go to save them, and in a way they are right but I intend to do it my way. The Jedi Masters looked over the two young women and were in shock at what had been done as well as the ramifications that would befall all of them in the future. Kim had never been so angry with anyone and the fact that it was her own student who had committed these atrocities did not help her at all. But before any of them could even say a word or debate about what had happened and what was to come the Hokage Tower as well as most of the village shook violently. Virtually everyone in the room went into a battle-like mode and looked out the office window only to see three starships attacking the village as well as what looked like strange white plant man marching down the roads of the village attacking anyone and anything that moved as they went. Right at this moment the communication system came to life showing none other than Orochimaru and a strange man wearing an Akatsuki outfit with a strange orange spiral-like mask who then spoke, Greetings to the Jedi Council and you as well Lord Hokage, I will be blunt and to the point. Hand over the two Jinchuriki and I will spare your village any more violence. But before Danzo could even consider agreeing to the proposal that had been set before him but was beaten to the punch by one of the Jedi Masters who then said, We will not allow you to take these young women for whatever dastardly plans you have for them. The spiral masked man then narrowed his eye and spoke any cold voice, then we will walk over your cold corpses to retrieve them. The communication quickly ended and the attack began with even more aggressively than before. Many of the Jedi were on their communicators coordinating counterattacks against the invading forces. One of the masters then looked out the office window at the stadium and then turned to Kim and Sasuke and spoke in a commanding voice leaving no room for error, everyone get to the stadium as soon as possible, 
We can have an easier time defending the civilians as well as these two and we will have a talk later Uchiha. It had not been easy getting to the Chunin exam stadium as the strange warriors proved to be plus more of a threat than they thought they would be. Once inside the stadium they were able to set up a barrier to protect the civilian sand the two hosts but it was proving difficult as the enemy starting to overrun their defenses. Many shinobi and jedi were now being forced into the center of the stadium thanks to the tactics of the enemy, it was at this moment that the two dark sith made their presence known to them ordering a stop to the attack. Viral then spoke for all to hear him, I am most impressed with your abilities jedi however give us the two hosts or you will all die right here right now. Hotaru took one look at Danzo and realized he was about to give them over to the Dark Sith but his personal motives remained clouded to the Jedi Master who wished that his friend Silas was here to help him, but before any of them could even make a reply they were all shocked to hear what sounded like a massive explosion going off in the distance followed by another explosion. Before the two Dark Sith could even issue an order before any of the Dark Sith could even issue an order to eliminate the Jedi and Leaf Shinobi were saved by what looked like Old Republic gunships that were now firing into the White Zetsu army that had invaded the stadium and were in the process of gunning them down without remorse. Viral and Orochimaru were in shock at the seeing the gunships entering the battle it was at this point however they noticed one gunship in particular that had set its sights upon them and then saw the face of Darth Vader himself standing behind several water troopers with an intense look upon his face. Vader wasted no time it and immediately ordered the troopers to open fire with the intent to kill the two dark Sith who had made so many people's lives a living hell in the elemental nations. Right at the moment the gunship's weapons let loose the two dark Sith immediately made their escape towards the Hokage monument hoping that at least one of their cruisers had survived the initial attack by the water troops. Vader knew without a doubt that the two Sith had escaped but needed to save the Jeddard and Leaf Ninjas. As soon as the Vader's gunship landed he immediately took on several Jedi Masters as well as Fu and Yugito who were more than happy to see the Sith Lord of the Balance as well as his apprentice. After taking off from the stadium the gunships immediately went on the attack against the white army. One of the older members of the council and someone who had shared Silas' personal feelings about many things turned to him and Vader and said, if the two dark Sith escape not only this village but world this war may never end as they will rally many to their side. I agree with you Master Jedi, Lord Raptor once we land to deal with this Sith threat of I want you to go after Viral and the Snake and do everything in your power to end them will find their master in time. Yes master, I understand, he said to Vader and then observed Fu with a frightful look upon her face as she then took a hold of his arm and said, don't you to die on us okay? Do not worry my love I have no intention of dying this day, other people however will not be so lucky, he said to her as the gunship landed offloading the Jedi masters as well as the two female hosts, the gunship with Itachi then flew off towards the Hokage monument as well as a nether gunship that was carrying a master and apprentice who were at odds at this moment in time. The Jedi ninjas and Sith of Balance immediately went into battle against the White Army, Kim and Sasuke landed their gunship upon the monument and prepared for battle as they saw the snake Sanin himself preparing to stop them. The sounds of rumbling and distant burning fires echoed throughout the command deck of the Separatist ship as the Black Zetsu tried to take command of the situation that was befalling his ship that had been successfully attacked by the Land of the Waters forces. Right at this moment one of the super battle droids and walked up to him and said, CMDR. We are unable to save the ship as it's slowly disintegrating and will begin to explode within a few minutes, we must evacuate at once to aid Master Viral. Zetsu could only grow as he made his way towards the exit of the command deck and shouted for all to hear, very well evacuate the ship and set a collision course for the village. I want everyone to attack our enemies at once. Roger Roger. Came from one of the droids in a deep voice that only could belong to a super battle droid which they can see right in front of him and hear thanks to its voice as it prepared everything and everyone to evacuate the ship with one clear objective that was to cause as much damage as possible to the hidden leaf village. Eventually Zetsu made it to one of the main cargo holds that was being used to hold many pieces of military equipment as well as supplies some of which were a prototype in their own right. He quickly jumped into one of them as the cargo hold was being rocked by a huge explosion sending flaming wreckage and fire shooting towards him at the last possible moment as he finally was inside the suit and then proceeded to jump out of the cargo hold eventually hitting the ground as he watched the separatist cruiser crash into a large wall that protected the village and then exploded with a tremendous force. The look of anger only intensified upon his face as he looked up to see only one of the other cruisers was still intact while the other which had sustained minor damage and was holding its own 
As he then looked at the two ships he noticed laser fire was now slamming into the damaged cruiser's side and saw what looked like an old Republic Star Destroyer which was ruthlessly attacking the cruiser that had the symbol for the land of water upon its hull. Zetsu watched the battle happening overhead with a sense of hatred that everything you organization had planned was being undone thanks to that Nine Tails host. He quickly turned to the rest of his clones and the droids and motioned for them to follow him into the heart of the village. Mavis and several other Jedi walked alongside Naruto as they entered the battle to save the Hidden Leaf Village from certain destruction. She then watched him ignite his twin lightsabers and then proceeded to engage the enemy forces with every ounce of his being. Mavis and the other Jedi watched the Sith Lord of Balance began to cut down the enemy forces with an intense look upon his face as he let the Force guide him in this endeavor to save his old home from destruction. At his side was the water troopers who had helped him discover the place known as the Lost Era in the first place. None of the white clones stood a chance against him even with their unique abilities as the force guided him is in his endeavors to cut down instead. Right at that moment as well as a small troop transport was seen flying through the area when a droid tank shot around hitting it in the side sending it flying into a nearby building and then hitting the ground hard in front of them right at that moment the forward door opened revealing several mist ninjas and water troopers. The new warriors opened fire with everything they had which consisted of everything from blaster fire to ninjutsu raining down upon the white clone army and its droid counterpart, plus the presence of the Jedi and Sith of balance began to turn the tide of battle. Naruto easily showed his mastery of the force in this battle as he coolly and calmly fought with an efficiency if you Jedi possessed in this day and age but also the ruthlessness of the Sith and their desire to eliminate as many enemies as possible and yet he did not go into a battle craze that ended innocent lives as he many times defended civilians even though they could tell he wanted nothing more than to punish some of them for what they had done to him so long ago. At the same time he also directed his own personal battalion of the water troopers which had white armor with blue and orange markings upon them including the designation 501 upon their armor and from the looks of things they were all veterans. Eventually Zetsu entered to battle with his mechanized battle suit and took one look at the Nine Tails host now known as Lord Vader with a look of disdain upon what was left of his unique face, the two of them locked eyes and literally charged at each other weapons at the ready. The Jedi's watched in shock as this young man would have suffered so greatly was literally cutting apart something that would give them significant problems. Eventually the suit had sustained so much damage that Zetsu had no choice but to abandon his mechanized terror and retreat from the battle knowing that this particular battle was lost but not the war. The Sith Lord looked at the hulking remain as the strange white plant-like man began to flee letting his soldiers pierced to buy him the time needed to escape. Vader let out a small row as he then decapitated a droid with a simple swipe of his lightsaber, he then began to feel in the force a strong presence telling him that something bad was going to happen. He then turned to Silas and noticed that the Jedi Master had much the same look upon his face, he then turned to one of the troopers and spoke, CMDR. We need a transport right now. Yes sir right away sir. Silas then walked up to the Sith Lord of Balance knowing that they were about to engage in a battle like no other. The small transport carrying Sasuke and Kim eventually landed on the mountain noticing the presence of the snake sage and their primary target, the two of them advanced slowly as the snake then brought out his twin bladed lightsaber and felt like taunting them a bit, I must say Sasuke if I had known you had the ability to use the force I would have done a lot more to bring you to my side as well as your former teammate. Sasuke for the most part had taken the bait and was letting his emotions control him, two of you were going to pay for all the Jedi and ninja you killed today. Kim realizing what was going to happen tried to calm her apprentice down and develop a battle strategy, we need to take him together and then go after the Sith Lord, I will go in from the right you go in from the them now, he shouted as he began to run at the snake sage only to receive a dose of force lightning to his body which then began to send him one part of the area to another until he finally collapsed with his Jedi robes smoking from the attack. Orochimaru was impressed that he had pulled off this little feat but also disappointed in the boy's progress as he was still too headstrong and decided to talk the teacher and tested his skills even further, as you can see my skills in the force exceed my apprentices that Vader destroyed, now back down. To elaborate his point he then shot force lightning at her which she then blocked with her lightsaber having to admit that there was an extreme amount of force trying to hold back the attack even with her experience. I don't think so traitor. The snake took this as an invitation and ignited a weapon at both ends as the two of them dueled to see who was better. The snake continued to taunt her hoping her reaction, I expected that Sasuke's new teacher would be far more skilled than this. 
He then proceeded to block a strike and then look her dead in the eyes, surely you can do better than this? She had taken the bait without even realizing what was happening as she felt her pride wounded by this cruel and sick man who now stood before her. Itachi held on to the door of the old Republic gunship with all his might as they had to fight their way to the Hokage monument and could already feel that something bad happened he only hoped they would make it in time. Sasuke was utterly surprised by what the snake had done and began to come around only to watch his teacher fight with a ferocity that he had not known of her. Unfortunately it appeared that the snake at the upper hand the whole fight as he easily struck her in both her arms and leg forcing her on the ground. He then deactivated one of the blades on his purple lightsaber and proceeded to go in for a killing strike. Sasuke wasted no time and quickly moved to intercept this strike catching the snake off guard in the process which only brought a smile to the man who was more snake than human. That's pretty brave of you Sasuke, but I thought you had learned your lesson by now about taking me on. Sasuke looked him in the eyes with a sense of determination and spoke, I'm not the same child, remember. Kim then used the force to bring her lightsaber to her hands and then threw it to her young apprentice who caught it and then proceeded to engage in a fierce battle against the snake. Strike after strike was landed by both parties with both him and the deadly Sith Lord watching. The two seemed for the most part evenly matched until Orochimaru finally found an opening and struck severing the young man's arm in the process with one force push sent him flying back hitting his master hitting his master in the process. Orochimaru then felt a strong presence in the force as he looked up to see none other than Itachi Uchiha now known as Darth Raptor of the Sith represented a balance between light and dark, the young man looked over at his brother and the young woman who was his teacher but still could not forget what he had seen. He however has jumped to and was taking down one of the most dangerous men on this planet, Orochimaru it's hard to believe that you were trained Sith of the dark side. As that jealousy I hear in your voice, you're not even a true Sith. The snake sage said hoping to get a rise out of this man but once humiliated him. Itachi however disappointed him by remaining calm and collected and then pulled out his own lightsaber knowing to complete his mission he would have to take out the snake once and for all. You are merely a pawn to this dark lord or have you forgotten the rule of two already, a master and an apprentice? He said clearly agitating the snake as he then ignited his black lightsaber. The snake let his anger get the best of him immersing himself in the dark side as he then rushed forward the two of them clashed as Raptor decided to use an old Sith tactic his master had taught him. Break them before you fight them. And as my master told you Orochimaru you are no longer his apprentice, you have been replaced. The two of them engaged in a tremendous battle with both of them a blur of motion trading blows and blocking attacks as they went. Their training in both the Jedi arts and that of ninjas make them dangerous foes indeed. However before a winner could even be decided they both felt a strong presence in the force which then separated them sending a snake flying into the ship such force that he was rendered unconscious, for Raptor however it was held in midair as he felt a strong pressure trying to crush his entire body news only things to his own knowledge and strength in the force that he was still alive. Darth Viral the true leader of Akatsuki in the true apprentice the Dark Lord of the Sith walked up holding his hand in midair while looking at Itachi as if he was any insect. I must say I'm quite impressed with you, I only wish I had discovered your ability instead of that wretched Vader. Itachi however continued to hold his concentration despite the pain he was in as he then spoke, then I am fortunate that you did not discover my abilities as also you who was responsible for my partner's death. Viral could only laugh at this, I still find it so hard to believe that you were trying to save some of your clan that day, it was I who finished them off, except your little brother there. I know what you did to my master. I may not know who you are but he will stop you, as one visible by of Darth Viral narrowed with anger as he suddenly felt a strong presence in the force. But unlike the last time he felt it it was stronger and there was another right beside and without warning he was sent flying right into the hole of the ship. He then watched as Darth Vader gently lowered his apprentice to the ground with great care. Raptor looked up into his master's eyes but he saw no disappointment only concern, forgive me my lord but I failed you. There is no failure here my apprentice, however I do intend to watch the show, he said calmly as Viral felt the new presence come into view shocked to see Jedi Master Silas in all his glory. The Master Jedi do not play by the rules of the council stood there breathing in and out with a look of intensity about him, Viral had never fought a Jedi in all of his life but he faced his master plenty of times and although he admitted he was intimidated by Darth Vader he felt no threat from this Jedi and without warning shot out force lightning have both targets hoping to incapacitated them so he could make quick escape. 
That hope was quickly dashed as both of them moved like lightning with their arms outstretched catching the lightning and suddenly sending it right back at him. If it was not for his quick reflexes and training in both the arts of being a ninja and a Sith he would have surely been hurt. He looked at them both as they stood their ground now with a look of determination about them that concerned him greatly he then quickly shot more lightning this time only at Silas hoping it would be too much for the Jedi to handle. Much to his surprise he simply held out one hand and absorbed both of the lightning strikes as if they were nothing slowly absorbing energy from the attack and looked at Dark Sith in the eyes. You still have much to learn boy, he said with dark determination was rare for a Jedi. But Viral refused to back down if he wanted to prove himself to his master and eliminate Jedi personally, the Jedi and Sith of balance are nothing compared to us, we are more powerful than either of you. With that said he then began to throw objects ranging from everything from simple rock to an entire tree at the two force users hoping to rip them apart in the process, unfortunately each one of them simply moved their hands and began to deflect each attempt shocking the dark Sith in the process. You are indeed powerful Sith, the dark side has corrupt you with its will, the Jedi Master said. Darth Viral narrowed his one good eye and then produced his own lure itself was jet black with the red markings here and there about it. He then activated the red blade and stared down the Jedi Master as the two of them quickly began to duel, each maneuver was furious and accurate as they proceeded to block and parried and try to strike each other down in instant. Viral had never encountered about all like this and noticed that Vader was not interfering as he merely watched standing guard in case anything tried to threaten the injured Jedi and his apprentice. Kim had honestly never expected Master Silas to be this powerful and what she had seen the Sith Lord of Balance do as well only made her more concerned about just how powerful he really was and what kind of retaliation he might take upon her student what he had done. Two of them were blur of movement with each one doing everything they could to try to land to strike, they would use any object to send themselves flying into the air while the battle. However it was clear that Viral was becoming less effective as the battle raged on. Silas simply parried and then blocked hard one of the Dark Sith's attacks and spoke, You have fought well warrior now surrender. But Viral simply smiled behind his mask as he pushed the Jedi Master away with the Force, unfortunately the old man only went about 10 feet away, no Master Jedi this is only the beginning. As soon as he said this he hit a button on his wrist and reached out his left hand causing several trees began falling on the injured combats as well as several droids to begin firing at the Jedi and Sith of Balance. Viral quickly used this opportunity to board his ship and take off not bothering to look back, knowing that they have failed their main objective but at the same time things were going according to plan. Vader quickly use of force to grab the trees before they could impact the injured, he then quickly use of force to slam them into the nearby droids evening the odds for Silas. Despite this tactic there were still many more droids to destroy but the force users quickly destroyed them and watched as two more Republic gunships landed on the monument several medics running to the injured. Sasuke began to try to get up despite the injury to his arm and saw his former friend lift his brother up with the force and began to walk back to one of the nearby gunships, he called out to his old friend hoping to convince him to stay, Naruto please don't go. Naruto stopped dead in his tracks but lowered Itachi onto one of the gurneys inside the dropship, he then turned and looked his old friend in the eyes. I can't stay here especially not with you after what you have done. You killed younglings and for what? It was just orders from the Hokage, I just did as I was told, he said pleading with his friend. Naruto however could not contain his emotions anymore and let a tear off from his eyes in front of everyone, I saw the recordings what you do to my temple, you were enjoying it Sasuke. Continue down this path in the dark side with forever dominate your destiny. With this said he boarded the ship as it quickly took off from the Hokage monument, Silas then motioned to one of the troopers to take him back as well. Three of the Jedi Masters along with Kim stood in the makeshift council chambers looking out at the hidden leaf village thinking about the days of events, Kim was still unsure about what to do with her young apprentice but also was concerned about what this battle meant just how bad things were going to get. She turned one of the Masters and asked, do you think what Vader said is true, it just doesn't seem possible. The oldest member on the council would in fact train Silas and was the most open to hearing what Vader had to say spoke, of balance Vader truly is, and learned from our past we have. You mean the time of the old republic and the first Darth Vader? Kim said hoping for some clarification. The old master nodded his head, yes, a puzzle we are in and a deadly one at that. The dark side has a strong presence here and yet so does the light. One of the other masters in the room decided to speak. 
then we need to keep an eye on this new Hokage as well as your apprentice Kim. She simply nodded her head, I agree master, however I must admit at least today was a victory against the dark side and this white army. Victory you say, no my dear Kim not victory. The shroud of the dark side has fallen, begun the second clone wars has. Danzo now stood on a balcony overlooking his secret project which had been codenamed Seed, his most powerful opportunities had been used to create this clone army with technology he said been taken from Orochimaru's secret labs in the Hidden Leaf, but the truth was the traitor had built them for his master before he had been discovered by the late third Hokage. Now a totally obedient army stood before him, with his apprentice and hands guiding this war he would first take over this world and then spread to the stars like a plague. He had already ordered some of his troops to take the old Republic destroyers and claim them as his own as he could see the four ships in the background, however right this moment he and the clan heads of the village as well as the civilian council were interrupted by a young ninja running in with terrible news. My lord lady Tsunade and several Jedi are missing and plus we have no news from the forces you sent to capture those strange ships. Right at that moment they heard rumbling as four destroyers began to lift off the ground. The Imperial March theme begins to plays in the background. Danzo thanks to his years as a ninja and a Sith Lord looked at one of the ships and could just make out the image of Darth Vader looking out the window then proceeded to give him the middle finger. Love theme between Anakin and Padme's wedding theme from the end of the movie starts playing. Naruto turned away from the window and looked at the still figure of Tsunade was being treated by many medics. He then turned and walked over to Fu was currently in a bed as well being checked over by the doctors and medical droids. She then placed a hand on her swollen and looked her in the eyes with a loving expression despite what terrors would come. The two of them and looked out the window as the four old Republic Star Destroyers sailed through the sky illuminated by a beautiful sunset. The island known as the Lost Era, the village of Kide. The the sound of birds could be heard as the villagers of Kide went about their daily lives, every single one of them nearly 15,000 people who were the descendants of those who had survived the crash landing of the great star destroyers from the last days of the Clone Wars called this place home. One part of the island was lush and green full with many trees that kept their small village well hidden from many of the more dangerous inhabitants of this planet despite being of the same race in many cases, the other part of the island was a barren wasteland of sand littered with the remains of many ships that had once sailed the great vastness of space as if it was an ocean. But because of this unique planet trying to leave was harder than it sounded and all attempts to call for help and failed, only a select few people knew what they were doing could come and go. Only a few people were not native to the village even knew about his existence, one of those villages had been destroyed not more than 20 years ago all because people fear their great power in the art of seals. For the moment everything was peaceful but an instant that peacefulness was shattered as many ninja of the land of water who were loyal to their cage and daimyo and believed without question that anyone who was different or possess a bloodline deserves nothing but death and to be cleansed from this world. And this pathetic excuse of the village was now at the top of their list. But many of the people simple farmers or even parents to simply watching their children grow up quickly reacted running further into the village hoping that the trees would provide some protection. Many others who had continued the warrior ways quickly donned what pieces of armor have been saved down their family line and picking up as many blasters as they could began to return fire upon their tormentors. The mist ninjas were at first taken back along with their samurai counterparts at the fierceness that only a few of these warriors seemed to possess as well as their tactics that were absolutely top notch, the leader of the group became quite discouraged with what was happening and quickly went through several sets of hand seals which even slammed into the ground shouting word out they had never heard before. At first the water forces are being pushed back but then in a large cloud of smoke from the leader a large crocodile then appeared with a huge battle axe upon its back then appeared and began to advance upon the defenders with a ruthlessness they had never seen before, even the last remaining member of the Jedi who had once led their ancestors into battle to save the Republic was forced to fall back as their blasters shots only made the creature angrier. Everything seemed lost to them however they quickly heard a noise and was surprised to see what looked like an old Republic jump ship firing into the water troops which took everyone by surprise, it was as if their ancestors and the Jedi had returned from the graves and the force to defend them. Escape the troops enough time to get another group of civilians out of the way however it was not enough to stop the creature as it continued to advance upon them. 
Just then an even more high-pitched sound was heard as a black and dark orange Jedi starfighter in the last days the war came flying overhead shooting its turbo lasers directly into the creature's face which was then followed by at least three high-yield torpedoes which then proceeded to rip the creature's back open ending its life as one of his arms was blown off by the force of the explosions landing not far from the water leader himself catching everyone by surprise. The sound of the fighter returned to as well as another sound of something hitting the ground, by this point the large crocodile then began to fall forward causing even more shocking all as it crushed many of the water troops upon impact. The leader however was still very much alive and unharmed and then took one look at the civilians and their protectors and began to advance upon only to be stopped by the feeling of dread gripped you can however the civilians felt calm and peace. When the leader turned around and came face to face with the young man no older than 14 years of age with spiky blonde hair and what appeared to be whisker-like birthmarks upon his cheeks however it was his eyes they can't believe his attention as well as much of his appearance. The young man had no shirt on yet he had strange pieces of armor on each hand up to his elbow, your set of black pants that were loosed incomparable yet provided a great deal of protection. But for the leader it was his eyes that were the most disturbing. One was the deepest blue that rivaled the oceans themselves and the other half in layer of red with most sticking of yellow about it. The Jedi would have never been able to complete his training because the only survivor had never completed his own looks on in shock as he spoke for everyone to hear. The masters of the force both light and dark have chosen then their new champion. The gray user has returned to balance force once more. Behind the young man stepped up a small group of warriors. One was clad in white and blue armor they had been passed down her family line from her ancestor Rex. Another was clad in armor that was as black as night and a dark green with hints of red about it. The young man moved his wrist and two cylinders then appeared in his hands, with a single motion blades made of light one red and another blue sprung to life. Some reason the leader now felt truly afraid more so than any other time in his life and almost wished had just taking his captive the red-headed woman and her two companions all of them traitors back to the land and water and agreeing to this insane mission. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.